Which source has made you the most money? What's made me the most money is how much you're worth. Yes. $3 million. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Give me a crazy story which you've never mentioned before. I can't I can't tell the story. In fact, I've changed my mind. I'm going to tell the story. It's exclusive. Yeah. I've had people try to kill me. I've had members of my family at at attempts on them. You've been banned off many social media. What's your moves? They use their bullets. I'm still all over social media, so they failed. Has the Matrix ever contacted you directly? I've had some anonymous messages which were scary i guess you could say i can sit here right now and recall events that will prevent me from sleeping for two to three days if i wasn't that way inclined with the workload that god put on my shoulders i'd just be in a ditch somewhere i would have killed myself by now i bought my own payment gateway i bought my own bank okay. Welcome back to the show and thank you all for returning back to the channel where we talk about business, advice, happiness, and personal finance. Guys, in this podcast, it needs no introduction. We're just going to get right into it. If this is your first time watching this channel, I urge you to do press that subscribe button so we can keep on bringing extremely popular guests like Andrew Tate and keep making these videos. I think I'd like to say like by now, this podcast is like the number one podcast in Dubai. And like, especially after this video, I'd say the number one podcast in the Middle East. So let's just get straight into it. Um, I'm just gonna summarize your story real quick. Andrew Tate, all of you have seen him, recently Google's most search man, the man that broke the internet, the most famous person on social media that isn't on social media. Thank you so much for coming on here. Really, I appreciate it. I know this podcast has a lot more to benefit from you being here than you do. So I really appreciate your time. We're going to talk about everything and this is going to be a good one. So usually we start by going through people's journeys. I'll, I'll just summarize it real quick and then we can get into the details. From what I understand your story, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but basically you were born in Washington, you were raised in Luton, your dad's an African-American chess grandmaster. Your mom was a catering assistant. You learned to play chess at five years old. And as a kid, you were already playing adults tournaments. You then started kickboxing and you became four times world champion in two different weight divisions. Then you started appearing in a reality TV show called Big Brother. You were removed after one week. You, then you started your webcam business. And after the webcam business, you, you simultaneously started the Hustlers University, which was like a course or like a university. And then you started your casino business after that. I get everything right? Yeah, it's a very sparse uh, explanation of my life. Of course, there's a lot of detail missing and I kind of feel like I've lived many different lives. I feel like I've been alive many different times. People ask my life story and it's hard for me to surmise in one compendious series of events because I, I've lived this entire existence as a professional fighter, this entire existence as a webcam owner, this entire existence broke this entire existence rich. I feel like I've been alive many times, if that makes sense. So it's, it's even difficult for me to surmise my life. It's been so varied. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> but now you're you're in Dubai. Yeah, you've been here for like a week or so. Yeah. How do you feel about being in Dubai? The best city on earth. It is. It's, it's the city of the future. Yeah. It is. I have nothing but good things to say about Dubai. And it goes all the way from down to the very base level, all the way up to the top. But the fact you can just walk around safely, that that that's eight that removes eighty percent of the world's cities nowadays. Yeah, and if you you can have everything in another country, you're rich, you have everything, but you can't even use your. What's the point of being rich there? Completely. And if you if you don't even have your safety, what do you have, right? Yeah. So there's only a few cities left on earth you can even like. This is just a sheer on watch. I only wear this in Dubai. I wear it in Bucharest, but that's because I have Bucharest locked down head to toe. Most people don't. It's your place. Uh, it's my place. Yeah. It's Tokyo. Hmm. Maybe some cities in Australia, which were kind of okay, but they're getting a bit worse. Yeah, that, that's it. Like yeah, that's that's it. That's it. You can't that's wear it in yeah. Western Europe. You can't wear it in America. You can't wear it in South America. You yeah. can't wear it in Africa. You can't wear. You can't wear a nice watch that you've earned. Honestly, it's, yeah. it's absolutely not really incredible. And, and you know they say like it's because no Dubai has all, or like UAE has all these resources, but every country has resources. But the problem is too much corruption there. For the 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 rulers don't maybe don't invest what they have in the country, you know, in the infrastructure and stuff. Yeah, so, I, I, the people will always make excuses, but yeah. you're completely right. There's a whole bunch of African nations with mass resources. More, and, maybe. Yeah, and, and, and there's a whole bunch of Western nations, nations with a bunch of resource. But yeah, it, I, I think it comes down to the leadership and the vision of the leadership and the fact they truly care. Exactly. And, yeah. and that's different. And that's an argument that can be long and very, very detailed and interesting about the differences between a democracy 
and perhaps the ruling system the ruling here, system, you know, because yeah. a democracy, a lot of people get in, they have three, four years in power. There's a huge bunch of bureaucracy. They just want to extract as much money as they can for the And then go. bounce, right? The changes they make now, they'll see results in 10 years when they'll be gone. They'll be gone, so they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And also there's a whole bunch of bureaucracy behind them, and which makes it very slow to change. It's very hard. Yeah. Like, I don't understand completely how UAE is run, but I'd like to think that if the Sheikh were to walk down the road and say, change this. It would be changed the same day. Yeah. Whereas in, in England or America, change this. Committee decides to change. The law <laughs> the goes vote. to Congress. The, the vote. vote. <laughs> uh, then, you know, it costs four billion. And then next year, maybe some guy will start to come. It's and, just slow. Yeah. And the construction company will keep three billion. They'll use one billion. And, and, we, and it's very slow. And what did we say earlier about the speed. key? We said speed. We said that it's the fastest people who adopt the quickest, the quickest change we're going to survive. And if that's going to be true, then I guess you can extrapolate it out and also apply it to a city or a country or a civilization. And the fact that Dubai is so adaptable and can adapt in real time means that it's basically the only city on the planet where no matter what happens on what happens in the world, they're always going to be the best possible position. I don't think that, that Dubai has any competition. I no. think it's seriously, genuinely the best city on earth. I think it's number one. Nice, nice. So you talk a lot about purpose. And wh what is your thoughts as to, do you have like a, an exact answer as to why we are created as humans and why we are here? Like, What is the purpose of life? Why have we been given life? I think we're here to struggle and to learn. I don't think we're here to be happy. That's why when we keep going back to the happy argument, I've always found that kind of frustrating and annoying. Yeah. And someone goes, oh, but I want to be happy. Why? Why? Like, I, why do you want to sit there and laugh? Like, like you're, you were happy your entire childhood. That's your happy days. You're allowed to be happy as That's a kid. It. It's all over now, right? You, you're a man. You have responsibilities. I think we're here to do important. Provide, protect. Yeah, protect, prefer, provide, protect. And we're also here to do important things. And important things are going to be difficult. And they're going to be hard. And you're going to get frustrated. But that's what gives you purpose. Yeah. I don't see anyone who's chasing happiness. I think that's a very feminine frame. I understand why some women just want to be happy. I think I don't know the how it feels to be a girl because I'm not one. But no. in my experience, I know women who just want to be happy. Yeah. Girls just want to have fun. They're, Fine. They're have but fun. you're a man, right? And if you're a man, then it's absolutely not really a different experience of life. I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to endure pain. Yeah. I think we're here to just see how hard we are to kill. I think yeah. that going through terrible things and living through them and, mm. and coming out the other side is one of the most fantastic things about being human. Uh, I think that it's, it's almost like once you understand what life is really about, there's no emotion which isn't enjoyable. The only emotion that, the only emotional state which can be seen as detrimental is feeling nothing at all. But if you're sitting at home and you're feeling truly heartbroken, at least you're feeling something, right? Least, and, yeah. and, and I think that's the whole part of being human. I don't, I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. That's, that's so I wake up each day and go, what can I, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Milk. Just, you just wake up and just say, give me this. Give me that. I want all of it. I need to, yeah. there's an army there. They're really big. We're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. Yeah. You need to go and conquer. That's, that's the purpose of life. <laughs> yeah but what like why do you think that we were created here to like what like do you believe that god created us so why did god create us to struggle like what what is it what is it because in, if you don't struggle you don't learn yeah god created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world and what did i say earlier i said that you don't learn a lesson or you don't appreciate something without, without pain without pain mm. so you have to struggle to learn anything mm. there's only two ways to learn things the hard way or the harder way if you're smart you can learn the hard way but in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If it's if the lesson's even 85% effective, they'll make the same mistake. It's only when they completely decimate and destroy an element of their life do they sit there and go, oh, oops, now I get it. No. That's how it goes. <laughs> so let's talk about where you are, Andrew, right now in this moment. You know, what is like going through your head right now? You've been banned off many social medias. You haven't done a podcast in a while. So what, what, what's your thoughts as to like, what are your plans now? Or like, what do you feel about what's happened to you? And what's your, what's your moves? Or, I mean, I don't, I don't expect you to reveal them, but what's your plans? Yeah. So the it, Matrix attacked me. Yeah. They tried to remove me from social They've media. They used their bullets. They used their bullets. I'm still all over social media. So they failed. They failed. What's scary about it. The only thing I will say I don't like about being banned is that you get three lives when you attack powerful people. They first ban you and try and shut you up. Secondly, they'll put you in jail for something you didn't do. And thirdly, mm. they'll kill you. So I've used my first life, which is kind of upsetting. 
when you know that next is going to be some false charges. The two worst ones. Yeah. yeah and and af- if you survive the false charges, you just die. Jesus. So it's that's kind of upsetting. But <laughs> that's kind of upsetting. It is. It is. I like to, <laughs> it's, I, very, yeah. it's kind of upsetting. I like to think the people at home know if I ever ended up in jail, a jail cell and the media started printing why that they'd know it's a pure lie a and pure it, lie. they made it up. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of scary. Outside of that, the ban in and of itself has not. I don't care, bro. It's made no difference to my life. I, the only thing Instagram was good for was a bunch of chicks, and you know that's all. That's the only thing I used it for. And you still have you have them? I do okay. You know I don't need it, so (laughs) I I don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah, I do think the social media companies have made a mistake. I think they're now realizing they've made a mistake. Are they contacting you? I can't say what's happening, but I do believe I will be reinstated. However, it's truly not that important at this time. If I had to martyr my social media accounts to show the world that everything I was saying was true yeah, it's about worth the, the matrix, sacrifice. then it was worth it, yeah. right? All they did was prove me completely and utterly right. Yeah, you said it a hundred times on different episodes. I am going to be deleted. They're going to try to silence me. Yeah. I wish someone would make a compilation of all these clips because you said it like a hundred times. Yep, I said before. it over and over again. They're going to remove me. They're going to ban me. They're yeah. going to... I, yeah. knew, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen, and they proved me completely and utterly right, and it backfired. They tried to put a media spin on the event and convince the world that I'm a bad person, and that has failed. Mm-hmm. Nobody believes I'm a bad person. Mm-hmm. 99% of the comments on any of my videos are positive. I'm speaking to people who are now waking up and understanding that the media machine lies. And the only people who truly dislike me are the slave minds. If I ever hear about somebody disliking me, when you ask them why, they don't, they don't know. Have, they don't know. Yeah. And that's what's scary. What's scary to me is that there's people out there that have a strong emotional reaction to scenarios, people, or events, and they don't even know why. They just read a headline. But that's that's the true slave mind. When someone can say a name to you and you're furious and you go, why are you angry? I don't know. Like that shows (laughs) how programmed you are. They can control his emotions like this. They can control you. So anybody who's critically thinking, anybody with a brain. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah. So anybody with a brain who can think for themselves likes me and anybody who hates me is barely sentient. So it's kind of good where now I have a very strong filter. Like, I don't like you. I know you're an idiot. That's fine. Instantly. Instantly, I know you're an idiot. Oh, bro, I love your work. Ah, a person who thinks. So it's kind of it's kind of it's convenient. It's kind of convenient to instantly filter, you know, my my life. But I must have been approached by hundred thousand people as I walk the street, and I've never had anybody say anything negative to me on the street ever. Male, female, old, young, never. Everybody, including women, love me. They yeah. all say you're saying the truth. You're doing such important work. I've never had anything. I've it's seen just, a video. Yeah, a video came out. This woman, she was like, "What other? Okay, whatever you want to say about Andrew, you can say it." But who are the mentors that the youth have today? Or is it the rappers that are all on drugs and all like over overdosing, which is very tragic. But which mentors do the do the youth have today that they can look forward None. to that says, you know what, it's not cool to do drugs. It's not cool to just party. It's cool to work and to sacrifice and to put to put your goals as number one and actually like you know what I mean? Like grind towards something, have but, goals and chase them. But that's done on purpose. Yeah. The mentors, the idols, the icons that they purport to the youth via the matrix are degenerate Hmm. because they want a degenerate class of semi-miserable sad people. You're never going to be truly happy in your mind if you go against the teachings of God. I don't care how much money you make. If you're a bad person, you're not going to feel happy. I don't care how much money you make. If you snake people or lie to people or do bad to people, you're never going to feel happy true deep in your heart. True in your heart, we're intrinsically designed to do right and do good. And that's something that God gave us. And when you have that, you understand that that's more important than anything else. So these people who are uh, up here promoting degeneracy, saying, you know, take Percocets and bang girls and drink vodka and you're gonna be, you know, gonna be great. I I drink, I'm not saying I don't drink, Mm -hmm. but that's not my message, right? And those people are never truly happy and and they're trying to purport that and convince people to do the same so that the whole populace is never truly happy. And like I said, now we go in circles. We've already discussed why they don't want us to be happy. So that's why. Do you think the drinking is like, um, an escape of sorts or I love alcohol, right? I drink, right? So I'm a drinker, but it's not my message. I don't sit here on a podcast and say, everyone drink, drink, drink. Yeah. drink. But rappers, rappers message is degeneracy. Drink, crime. Yeah. Sh- sh- rub this guy. Completely. And, and kill that guy. Completely. And I, I'm saying that if you live that way, you're never going to be truly happy in your heart. If you want to feel happy inside of yourself and you want to feel content and you want to yeah. feel stable inside of yourself, you need to live true to God. 
And I'm not saying you can't drink a little bit of alcohol or not party or not have a little bit of fun, but you have to be a good person. You have to balance life. You have to balance life. You have to be a good person overall. I know I'm a good person. And when the matrix is trying to convince the world that I'm not, that just proves even further that I'm a good person. The world we now live in today, when the mass media machine is trying to tell you somebody is evil, you can know pretty well that that person's probably good and vice versa. Like there's a reason they are trying so hard to convince people to ignore their own ears. People listen to my message and go, that's a positive message. And the media machine's going, no, it's not positive, he's bad. Mm. They're trying to brainwash you. Yeah, no, honestly, you're, you're right. I'd like to ask you like right now in this moment, are you happy? Is this like the happiest moment you've been in your life? Or can you think back to a time where you were like, this is the happiest moment of my life? I don't believe in the societal paradigms in which they have tried to construct this idea of happiness. I don't believe or subscribe to the way that happy and sad is currently un- understood by the masses of the population. I think if you are anything less than absolutely yeah. distraught, you are happy, you're a version of happy. Uh, it's like saying gray is a version of black, right? No matter how light the gray is, you can still call it a version of black. And unless you've gone through an event which hopefully doesn't happen too often, like the passing of a family member or something that's truly destructive and detrimental to your mindset. Besides these events, which hopefully only happen a few times in your life, you should be happy. If you're not crying or paralyzed in silence due to the absolute magnitude of a detrimental circumstance or the absolute magnitude of a negative event, then you are a version of happy. So I am always happy is the short answer. I don't believe in not being happy. I don't believe in not saying to myself, I'm happy. I'm always a version of happy. And this chasing, this idea of chasing happiness and always being concerned and preoccupied with how happy you are is actually the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, I think, in the world today, especially men who wake up and go, oh, I don't really feel happy, so I need to get happier. And that's how they end up down a hedonistic path of drugs or alcohol or gambling, Chasing chasing pleasure. I don't care how I feel. Yeah. I don't care if I feel happy or sad. It doesn't yeah. really affect what I do each day. I do the exact same things. I act the exact same way. I, it does, I don't care. Yeah. I, it doesn't, I, doesn't, I don't put weight to the significance of the emotion. So I always consider myself a happy person, but if I woke up and I was slightly less happy one day than another, it wouldn't affect anything I do and I wouldn't put any relevance to it. I'm, yeah, hu- yeah. I'm human and that's life. And so yeah, am I any happier now that I, am, that I have hundreds of millions of dollars? than before I was broke? Yeah. Not really, but I was never unhappy. I'm, I'm, I'm the same state that I was then, that I am now. I have work to do and I will do it. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, very well put, yeah. No, but you're right, definitely. I've heard like the chase for happiness and the more you try to seek happiness, the more you enforce in yourself that you're not happy. Well, also there's no light without dark and there's no joy without pain. You can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Exactly. And no matter how hard you chase pleasure and happiness, there's going to be dips and troughs in between. There's going to be come downs and downtrends. And you're going to have the juxtaposition between that time you were laughing your head off and acting giddish like a child and the time that you feel depressed as such. And I think it's much better to just adopt a very disciplined, stoic mindset. I'm always the same base level of happy regardless. If I lost all of my money today, I would be the same happy. Mm-hmm. If my net worth quadrupled, I'd be the same happiness. Yeah. As long as I'm alive, which is a struggle, unfortunately, in the current climate, but as long as I'm alive and the people I, I care about and love are alive, and as long as I get, as long as God gives me the honor of doing my duties and providing for the people I care about, as long as I get to wake up and know that there's a whole bunch of people in the world who need me and I get to work hard to please them and do good for society and good for the world, yeah. then, then I'm, I'm a vessel of God and I'm happy, I'm happy enough to survive. That's, that's all I look at it as. I don't ever consider how do I feel. That doesn't cross my mind. I have things to do. <laughs> I have things to do. You're too busy to think about that. I'm too busy. I'm, I have things to do every single day. I have very important things to do. And how I feel really is not going to affect how I complete those tasks. Right. And I, I, when I speak to men, they say I'm unhappy or I need to be happier. I think that's absolutely the wrong frame of life. You're a man. You have duty. You have honor. You have things you should be doing regardless of how you feel. And the people who are perma obsessed with happiness or sadness, I just think it's the wrong paradigm to view the, the lens of life. I yeah. think you should get up and do what needs to be done. Yeah, man. 
You're a positive influence, man. I don't know what, what's all the stuff, man. You're just reinforcing positivity in people. I'm absolutely a positive influence. And that's the problem. The key word there is influence. The reason the matrix has attacked me is because of that. It's because yeah. I am an influence. Yeah. And when they don't like influence. They don't like influence because I'm, I've not sold my soul. They don't control me. And normally when you become massively influential, they control you. They you do. either sign a contract or your sponsor yeah, or your manager, a record label, a record label, yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah. They have some kind of leverage over you to make sure you only say what you are supposed to say. I'm an individual which they do not control. I have mass influence over the population of earth. Yeah. And when you have somebody like me who is principled, who has morals, who believes in God, who will not sell their soul, will Never. not promote degeneracy, yeah. who also has mass influence, they see me as a threat because they say, there are certain agendas which he will not promote because of his morality. Right. And we need immoral people who have sold their souls absolutely and completely. So they'll, in, they'll enforce the slave programming amongst the population. So they see me as a threat because of my mass influence. And me being positive in and of itself is also a threat to the establishment because they don't want people to be happy. They want you to be semi-depressed and sad and miserable because when you're sad, you're self-obsessed. And you're distracted. You're distracted and you're self-obsessed. When you're sad, you're sitting at home, me, 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 me. It makes you very selfish. Yeah. You don't care about your community when you're sad. Yeah. You don't care about your country when you're sad. You don't yeah. care about the injustices of the world when you're sad. You don't care about trying to actually go and make the world a better place because you're too busy thinking about yourself. So they want you miserable, semi-depressed, sad, unhappy, so that you can sit at home and accept them doing whatever they want to the planet and other people yeah. without ever talking or standing up or doing the right thing. If you're happy, uh, and motivated, you're going to be far more likely to fight against injustices. So the fact that I have mass influence and I can just make people feel better is a threat to them. They don't want me to make people feel better. They no. talk about men's mental health and pretend to care. But when I come along and genuinely help and, and stop people from committing suicide, they delete me. They don't want that. They want everybody semi-depressed. They want you miserable. They want you distracted so that you're too busy crying your eyes out in a room somewhere or sitting in yeah. deep thought worrying about this girl who left you so yeah. they can just continue to run the world. Yeah, because if you're if you're thinking about yourself, you're not thinking about the new rules that are going out or the new stuff that's going on. But you're not, you're not thinking about the work of the devil, which yeah. is what's happening right now. We're, we're currently in a fight of good versus evil. Mm -hmm. it's, it's genuinely that serious. This is a, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or any superhero movie, this is the battle of good versus evil. And anybody who's sitting, who doesn't see that, who doesn't see that every con armed conflict on the planet, the conflict for our minds, the way the matrix is attempting to control us, this is genuinely a battle of God versus Satan. And if you think that you can just sit idly by while these two titans go to war and you're not going to end up caught up in the crossfire, then you're absolutely and utterly ignorant. At best, a coward at worst, and I think it's most likely cowardice. We're in the middle of the greatest battle that humankind has ever faced. And unless people stand up and actually try and fight hard for good and for God, then we're going to end up in absolute tyrannical slavery. Yeah. You know, while you're talking right now, it's just making me think the way you talk, it's like really articulate. It's like really intriguing and you're well informed on many different topics. So were you always like this? And like, how, how did you how did you build this? Like, did you read books or, you know, what I mean, how did you become so well informed on everything? How did you talk so articulately? Good question. I don't read books. I'm actually famous for saying I've never I've read one book in my life. In my adult life, I've read one book and I was in a jail cell. So I had nothing else to do. So I don't read books. Which book was it? Uh, it was an awful book. I think it was called, I can't remember the name of it. I've told this story before and someone found it in the comments, but it was a terrible story about a UN negotiator, a woman who was in New York and she had been fired from the UN because she made this big mistake. And then the UN needed her back because she was the best negotiator. Yeah. And they got her back and they kept talking about, <laughs> I wish I didn't make the big mistake. And for two thirds of the book, it's like, she's so, she's so good at her job, but what was this big mistake? And it turns out she was negotiating between two African warlord tribes and okay. she ended up sleeping with one of the warlords. Oh and, now, and, and when you get this big re revelation, you're like, oh, so you're just, <laughs> just <laughs> the warlord? In the middle of a negotiation, like how did that even happen? How what you were so interested, and then you just realized, like, how <laughs> charming was this guy? He's a mass murderer. Like, the whole book it upset me. So, no, I don't read books because books are slow, and I think the world we now live in today is about speed. Speed, speed is absolutely and utterly important. Attention everything must spans be are like this, absolutely, and everything must be done as quickly as possible. And Darwin said it, even though I'm not a, a proponent of evolution, he said it's the most adaptable 
member of the species that survives, I will change it and say nowadays the most, the quickest member of the species survived. It's not about being the biggest or the strongest, it's about being the quickest, uh, the most adaptable to change. And to read a book is just too many human hours for the amount of information and knowledge you get. So I don't read books, I think they're slow, I think they're a waste of time. I think a lot of it's mental masturbation for people to sit there and say, I wanna get smarter, so I read books. Yeah. And I, I talk to these people, they're not even smart. Yeah, I know, I, I know everything about everything because of my life. Yeah. It's been varied and it's been very difficult. And I'm perspicacious and I pay attention and I learn my lessons. And that's how I know everything about everything. I don't need to read books. Yeah. There's not a subject you can name right now where I don't know something about. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Yeah, you na name it. <laughs> Korean War, anything. You name it, I know something about something. That's just what happens when you get to a certain level of, of intelligence because you can apply scenarios and- Patterns, can, it's all patterns. It's all patterns, absolutely. And, and, and history may not repeat, but it certainly rhymes and humanity all acts in a pretty similar way yeah. across all cultures. And once you get an X amount of knowledge in one place, you can basically apply and extrapolate it out to anything. Anything, yeah. No, and you're right about the reading books thing. A lot of people, there's like this new, like basically they become like self-help junkies where they're just trying to seek self-help books and they think to themselves like, I'm doing something productive because I'm reading a book. But actually you have so much work that you could actually do to actually like do implement what the book says, you know what I mean? Well, the thing is with reading a book is it's a reward without any risk. And this is why I think a lot of people are proponents of reading and they say reading, 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 because nothing can really go wrong besides wasting your time in life, of course, but they don't believe that. Mm. I am a much larger proponent of larger risks and larger rewards. If you wanna learn about self-help, if you wanna understand yourself and see what kind of man you really are and learn yeah. how to fight through adversity yeah. and learn how to get up when life's difficult and learn how to control your mind and learn how to struggle, then yeah. you can go to the boxing gym and you can, get, you can get your ass kicked. You do not need to read any books. Yeah. You need to get in the gym, walk in there, and say, I'm gonna fight the best fighter here every single day and not quit until you can eventually beat him. But man, most people are not man enough for that. So instead, they'll read a self-help book, and they'll sit there and try and talk to me about mindset. I learned my mindset in battle. My mindset is 87 professional fights. My mindset was learned in the reality of the real exactly, world. Yeah. I don't need to read a self-help book. I don't need to read about motivation or confidence. I've been in the cage smashing people's faces in. I don't need to learn any of that yeah. stuff. So I learn in reality and, and reality is always gonna be a better teacher than a book because you're not learning when you read books. You're, you're regurgitating, you may be reading, but I don't believe you're truly learning. My coach used to say, if it doesn't hurt, you didn't learn. And I think he's completely right. And it's the same with, it's the same with entire life. You see people make the same mistake over and over again until, until it eventually goes really wrong. Yeah. And it's only then they'll change. Then they change. So, so yeah. absolutely. So I, I learned how to become self-disciplined and become self-motivated and work hard. And I learned how to face adversity and find strength within myself I didn't know I had yeah. because people were trying to kill me inside of a cage. And you cannot replicate that by reading pages of a book. No, no. So it's a waste of time. Yeah, you don't need to read about other people's experiences because you have enough of your own. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and yeah. yeah, so I'll actually say here right now, I'm a, a massive anti-reader. Anti <laughs> I, think, I, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. I, think if you, I think as a young man, if you wanna get your life better, Damn. the most important thing you have are your waking hours. You need to be out competing all the other people on the planet who are hyper competitive. And if you think you have eight hours to sit there and just read a book, you are wasting your time. You are too slow and you are going to lose against people yeah. like me because we're just too quick, yeah. too fast. Our networks are too various and large and we make decisions too quickly and we absorb information too quickly and you're just behind the time. By the time you're done reading the book, the, the moves have been made. But it's over, yeah, <laughs> game's over. Yeah, but I think one good thing about reading books, especially now, especially what you were saying, is because like like you said, attention spans are like this these days. When yeah. you read a book, you kind of learn to train yourself to like take information a bit slowly. It kind of helps your focus a bit more. That's true, and we do. We certainly have an attention span problem. Even I have it myself to a degree. But I think that's just the way the world is moving. Yeah. I think you need to get ADHD, and you need to learn to control it within certain wow. paradigms. Uh, you that's need to be able to sit and say, "Yes, I struggle to focus on." this one particular video, for example, but as a whole, I can keep my focus within the parameters of work, whether I'm watching this video and talking on right, Telegram right. and replying to this email and re reading work. this, just do it all at once. So I mean, that's what I do. Yeah. I've had people come into my office and say, are you on a phone call and playing chess and reading a web page at the same time? I'm like, yes. I'll be reading what I need to read and on the phone and at the same time playing chess. Otherwise my brain's not full You enough. need to be stimulated. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, can I focus on one thing? Not easily, but am I massively successful doing enormous amounts of work? Yes, every single day. Yeah, so that's the just, most important thing. It's just staying within the parameters of of constructive. If if what you're doing with your energy is constructive and you're within those parameters, then you're gonna be massively successful anyway. Yeah, no, that's basically true. And about your confidence, is that also from these experiences or how does one like become this confident 
And especially another thing is you seem like, you know, you really love yourself and which is a good thing. But how does someone go about loving themselves? I'm proud of myself uh, yeah. and I deserve to be. Yeah. Most people don't deserve to be proud of themselves. Yeah. And that's the truth. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I have confidence issues. And I say, if I was you, I would have confidence issues. Of course. <laughs> I don't. I completely understand why you have confidence issues. You're a dork. <laughs> But yeah. we have to be realistic here. Yeah. We have to be absolutely and utterly realistic because the world is brutal and it's harsh. If you're not proud of yourself, you probably don't deserve to be proud of yourself. So you're not going to feel happy. And you just talked about confidence. Confidence comes from competence. The reason I'm confident is because I'm good at everything. Right. I'm good at everything I do. The things I'm not good at, I'm not confident in, of course. And I know what they are. I don't do them very often. I've now created my reality to the point where I don't do anything I'm not good at. You hire, you just hire. I either hire or I just don't want to do it. Like yeah. I, I don't play darts. Yeah. I'm not good at darts, right? <laughs> I, I do what I, I'm do what i good at. Yeah. So yeah, I'm absolutely not really confident because I'm absolutely not really competent and that takes practice and discipline and motivation and you need to fail a few times. You need to get up. And like I said earlier, when I learned my entire mindset in professional fighting and chess, the, the two combined, that's how it comes down to. And when people say, oh, I, you know, I have competence issues, usually I can look them up and down and say, yeah, if I was you, I would completely and utterly struggle with confidence issues because you're, the world is competitive and there's men like me on the planet and friends like mine on the planet and you're competing against us for, for money, for girls, for status, for resource, yeah. and you're gonna be destroyed and decimated the entire time. So of course you have confidence issues when you can be annihilated in real time by the competitor. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you have confidence issues? You'd be psychopathic not to. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe that, that unconfidence is a good motivation for them to actually- Well, it's supposed to be. Yeah. This is the thing that I don't, I don't truly understand. If I'm unhappy with something and I'm uncomfortable with something, that's I good. fix it. Yeah, That's endless motivation, which I don't truly believe in as a concept, but that's endless fuel for the fire. Right. If I was unhappy with something about myself, regardless of what it was, I would be able to take all of that discomfort and turn it into endless energy to get the problem oh, fixed. Yeah, exactly. But these people seem to- It's okay to be unhappy. Yeah, well, these people seem to sit and say, I'm really, un I'm really unhappy with X but then stay doing X. So I don't believe yeah. they're truly actually unhappy. What you'll notice if you live life long enough is that somebody will sit and say to you, I'm unhappy being a loser. You yeah. say, why are you a loser? I just sit at home, play video games seven days a week. And you're like, okay. And maybe three days of the week, they're unhappy doing that. Yeah. And that's the time they email you and that's the time they want to make a change. But four days of the week, yeah. they don't really, it they doesn't really bother them. Yeah, it doesn't really bother them. Because if it, if it bothered them seven days a week, guess what? They would fix it. Correct. Yeah. So I have very little sympathy for people. And that's not because I'm not a nice person, but it's because I've been so hard on myself and I've been through so many things that were difficult. Yeah. And I've been through so much pain and trauma myself. Some of it self-inflicted, some of it given to me by God to make me a better person. But I've been, I've been so difficult on myself. It's very hard for me to look at somebody who's refused to be difficult on themselves and see them as my equal or feel sympathy or pity for them. Why would I feel pity for somebody who took the easy route when I took the hardest possible route? Yeah. I took the hardest possible way to be the man I am and you were too big of a and now you want me to feel sorry for you? I don't feel sorry for you. Yeah. I don't feel sorry for these people. And uh, because as a man, you can be anything you decide you want to be. That's the beauty of being a male. You can build your character completely from the ground up, just like a video game. Every single thing about me that people respect, I built. I was not born a world champion kickboxer. No. I was not born this intelligent or uh, intellectual. I was not born this rich. I was not born this strong. I was not born this confident. I was not born this interesting. I was not born this charismatic and humble and gorgeous and tall and strong and sexy. I was not born none of these things. I became these things myself. So I deserve all the spoils of war. And anybody who decides they don't want to work hard enough to become those things, then they deserve to sit and accept they're my inferior. Yeah. That's, their, that's their problem. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's their problem. But have you, have you struggled with any mental health issues yourself? Because, you know, one thing also I noticed about you, from one, one side when you talk, you seem like very positive about life. But I've seen clips of you where you, where you say like, do you say like, sometimes I feel you say enjoy everything and, you know, always be happy. But, or like always be like positive. But then in some parts of you, you say like, I was angry when I was broke. I had to get rich. Yeah. I needed to get rich. I was furious. I was, I couldn't sleep when I was broke. And this is what we're talking about the uncomfortable, being uncomfortable and how it can motivate you. When I didn't have enough money to buy whatever I wanted, I couldn't fall asleep at night because I understood there are people out there that did and I didn't see them as better than me. And I thought, why are these people who I don't see as my superior living in an experience that I can't live? Mm. And it bothered me to the point where I could not sleep. <laughs> So yeah, that was real. When you talk about suffering mentally, I don't really consider that suffering. Uh, I did. I have had a very painful life. I still think to a degree I do, but that's self-inflicted. 
But I can't imagine living other, any other way. I can't imagine living in this idea, this utopian, ha ha ha, every day, just, Ooh. you know, girls drink, hedon, hedonism. I don't want that. Yeah, it's degenerate. I'm always, I think the only thing you can do that's not degenerate is usually be fighting Perfect. a battle or solving a problem. Cool. Yeah, growth. Yeah, so you need to either fight a battle or solve a problem to avoid degeneracy, which means I'm constantly looking for them. I'm currently one of the largest battles on, that you can possibly a man can possibly take on. I'm taking on the Matrix, the most powerful people on the planet. Right. Yeah. So yeah, is my life difficult? Yeah. Uh, am I complaining about that? No. In fact, I'd hate it for for it to be any other way. Yeah. No, you're right. Honestly, you know, you talk about the Matrix a lot. Has the Matrix ever contacted you directly? Have you ever got any contact from them, or you you don't you can't say? I've had a couple experiences which have certainly been strange. No oh, way. Uh, can, you, can you talk about it or you prefer not to? I've had some invites to some strange places with some strange people. Um, I've had some anonymous messages which I verified to be true, which were scary, I guess you could say. I, I've, definitely, I'm defi- I've definitely been contacted by, by the Matrix in and of itself. But initially when they speak to you, they try to make you change sides. Mm-hmm. That's they try to switch you. Well, I, they try and get a degree of leverage over you, or they try and bribe you, or they try and get you to sell your soul. Yeah. So they'll try and invite you to a party where you do some degeneracy and they get it on video, or uh-huh. they try and get uh, a threat against you and try and blackmail you, or mm-hmm. they try and offer you a whole ton of money for this contract, Just but you have to be careful yeah, yeah, what yeah. you say now. And yeah, you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they try very hard initially to get you with the... De- without violence. Yeah, without violence. They try with degeneracy. Mm. That's what they try. And that's, Distractions. Th- yeah, well, you know, most, people, most people's hearts and souls can be, can be bought. So when they can print unlimited money, why would they go the route of violence? They can just print unlimited money and give it to somebody and own them. Yeah. But when you're like me and you don't care about money, the money yeah. and, you, and you also have morals as a person, I am their threat. They can't buy me. And, and they, they've tried and they can't convince me with a little bit either uh, or, or a lot. Of <laughs> they, they can't. I'd rather go without. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So they I'm can't. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So and and that frustrates them because 99 percent of men in my position start chasing girls. Yeah. Chasing money. Yeah. And then you end up controlled. Yeah. But I think that like maybe a lot of that mindset that you have now is because you've already got the money. You've already got the woman. But do you think that in the earlier stages when you were really trying to chase the money that this could have tempted you or, you know, they could have, they could have maybe helped. Yeah. I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I could have, I don't think I've ever would have sold my soul because I have a baseline morality. However, yeah, you're right. I do live in abundance. So it's easy for me to say no, but greed is real and humans are all naturally greedy. No matter matter how much you have, you want more, right? If someone comes along now and offers me 200, 300 million dollars, you're still going to sit and think, oh, I that, want would, that. that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. right? but, in fact, the more you want, the, the more you have, the more you want. But you this know? is where we talk about morality yeah. and we were talking about Dubai and we're talking about religion. We, let's even talk about Islam. That's the reason yeah. I have so much respect for Islam as a whole because they I have, Islam. The, yeah, I have so much respect for it because they have a baseline morality. We're here in Dubai. You could walk outside and find a poor construction worker who just moved here, who's earning, I don't know, no money, you know, can barely afford to eat and offer him a million dollars to denounce the prophet. He won't do it. No, wait, he'll never no do chance. it. He'll never do it. No Whereas chance. in the West, if you were to go and find a Christian, one dollar. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean anything, right? Mm-hmm. So it's that baseline morality that they can't corrupt that they're afraid of. It's why they're afraid of Islam. It's why they're afraid of me. It's why they're afraid of people who sit and say there is more to life and existence in this and the next yeah. than simply degeneracy and or you being know, bought and owned. And you know, I feel like Islam. The way they talk about Islam, it's kind of like you see, you see the patterns. Whenever there's something force that's that's trying to change people they'll try to put labels on it the literal name islam comes like salam it means peace yeah but they'll try to put these labels on it because you know they don't they don't like islam yeah they they don't like anything they can't completely and utterly control yeah and, and muslims are uncontrollable well yeah they have they a higher agree. purpose and a higher calling i do think a lot of the world's problems especially in the west with the absolute degeneracy and the work of what do you say shaitan shaitan yeah the work of shaitan <laughs> shaitan it could be fixed with Islam. Honestly, I, I, yeah. I call for the Islamification of all Western countries because Christianity has absolutely and utterly failed. The idea of a religion is to preserve the morality and preserve the traditions of a country. Exactly. If you have failed to do that, then you're no longer a religion. If you're going to sit there and inside of your own country, your prophets are mocked, all of your ideals are ignored. And it's okay. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, all, yeah. and society is degenerating in real time and your children are no longer safe from brainwashing by the matrix, then your religion in and, of, in and of itself as a concept has failed. Christianity has failed to preserve Christian values on any level in any country ever. So when 
now that you know it's a failed religion, that only leaves one religion left in which you can install. Degeneracy will disappear. Yeah. Crime will disappear. Mm -hmm. Men and women will stay families again. People will have children. And people all the world's problems will be fixed. They'll chase their goals. Absolutely. I call for the Islamification of the entire Western world because otherwise we have atheistic countries. And when you remove religion, now what do you have? People are now adhering to woke ideology and this new insane religion. Everybody has a religion. If you remove Christianity from the West, you don't have atheists. You now have these people ad adhering to this woke new world liberal psychopathy where people are doing absolutely insane and disgusting things to each other and children. And they're sitting there saying that that's progressive somehow. And it's absolutely not really disgusting. So yeah. if we need a God to believe in, to preserve morality and decency amongst humanity, then let's have a God that people actually fear and respect. And that's why Islam is the only religion left on the planet. There's no other religion you can possibly name that even matters. Mm -hmm. Now we have to make your name like Ibrahim Tate or something. Let's do it. <laughs> So have you actually like taken shahada, become Muslim? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. You want to do it on the podcast? <laughs> That's uh, it's 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 an interesting conversation and uh, on it's ongoing. Let's it's put ongoing. It, let's put it there. Yeah, no, but, it's it's a slow journey, you know. Yeah, well, eventually. Yeah, let's. You're uh, coming. You're coming. Let's, let's put it there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's talk about um, money. One of my favorite subjects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. You have a lot of sources of income. Yeah. Um, which source has made you the most money? What's made me the most money is the War Room. The War Room is a private members organization that I run. So when I first got, this is interesting. When I got extremely wealthy, I wanted to know where I kind of felt like I'd gone to outer space expecting to see aliens, mm -hmm. and I got there and there were none. No aliens. I was like, "Where is everybody?" <laughs> Okay, I'm rich, but I expected once I became rich to meet other men who were rich, yeah. focused, intelligent, had their dating lives in order, their yeah. physical health in order, their finances in order, their connections in order. And I got to the top of the mountain. I looked around and realized nobody had it. Like, yeah, this guy's rich, but he's cucked by his wife and he's fat. This guy's rich, but he's controlled by the Matrix. Mm. This guy's rich, but he's dummy. He just made a bunch of money making music, rap. He's an idiot. Luck, yeah. This guy's rich. Like, and there was nobody Good who point. had it all. Yeah. I was like, and I wanted a network of genuine predators. I wanted the Freemasons almost. I, I thought, I didn't want to join their organizations. But you I wanted people wanted to, like you. Like I wanted you. people like me. So I started an organization to find those men. Yeah. So now we have 3,000 members all around the world. Wow. Uh, a lot of them are very, very wealthy. A lot of them aren't. We have people who join who are 18-year-old brokies with nothing. That's fine. They spent all their money on joining. That's fine, yeah. Because if you're prepared to listen and learn, yeah. then you're in the right place. If you spend all of your time sitting around people who talk about how to become powerful and influential and rich, you're just get, getting guess what you're going to end up being? Yeah. Powerful, influential, and rich. So now I have the greatest network on the face of the planet. And when I say it's maybe the most money, it's not because of the membership fee. The membership fee is very low. It's cheap. It's because of the, the opportunities and connections inside of the war room. Mm. And that's why I am ultra competitive and that's why nobody will ever beat me. If you're an individual and you wake up and think, I wanna make my life better and you spend eight hours reading a book, that's fine. When I wake up, I wake up to maybe 25 messages from some of the most influential and rich people on the planet that you've never heard of <laughs> telling me, buy this now, this is an opportunity to make money on the Russian ruble. This is an opportunity to make money British here. Bound, yeah. This is yeah. This is an opportunity to make money on this land. This is what's going down in Iraq. Here mm -hmm. we have an opportunity in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Here we, I, and I'm sitting there going, okay. And I have got all this curated information and genuine opportunities in real time presented to me. And within 15 minutes, I've made a five million dollar investment. Yeah. You're you're on page one. You're still reading your book. <laughs> the introduction. You're still reading. Yeah, chapter. you're still reading the introduction. And this is why against pit people like me and my network and the other people inside the war room, you will always lose. Yeah. So the war rooms maybe the most money, but not because of membership fees or anything like that, because of the, the genuine network. connections and opportunities inside of the war room. And we're just, we're just free minds. Anybody who listens to what I say and agrees with it and likes it should understand that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time right. with. 100%. And if you know 100%. that, then you need to make sure you're not spending time with anybody you don't want to be. Oh, yeah. So people who join the war room, they join and they want to become professional. They want to become absolutely utterly professional. And like I said, we have extremely seasoned and experienced and, and successful men, but we also have people joining saying with nothing, but they're humble enough to learn. I come here, I'm young, I don't have any money, or I'm old, I have a little bit of money, or whatever it is, yeah. but I am here to learn and absorb. I want to commit. I want to commit. And if and if you learn and absorb and you're in the right place, then you can do fantastically well. So the War Room, I mean, with the War Room Network now, it, I could never be broke ever again. It's, yeah. it's impossible for me to ever go poor. 
I, I, I have access to billions of dollars I could loan from these men if I, because I know they could trust me if they wanted to. I have a place I can sleep in 3,000 different locations around the world in big mansions. If I need a Lambo, they'd send it to me. That's if I need a visa for a country that you can't get a visa for, someone there will have a business to give me an LLC, to give mm. me a visa via their business. I, I, if I need a jet, it comes. If I, if I need information on anything, yeah. if I need to do a money transfer to Afghanistan, it, which if anyone's tried, they know how difficult that is. Yeah. I've got a guy who fixes that. Are you good? <laughs> It's all it's there. there. Yeah. It's, it's everything. So whenever I have any problem in my life, no matter what it is, I go to the war room. And in fact, I'll, I'll prove the power of the war room right now. right now. I became the most Googled man on the planet. Yes. I hacked every single social media algorithm to a way which people are sitting there trying to work out how I did it and they can't work out exactly how no. it's done. The war room did that. Mm -hmm. I went to them and said, I've decided to go overt as opposed to being underground. I want to go overt and break mainstream. And four months later, I was the most Googled man on the planet. The war room did that. Of course, there's not many organizations on the planet that can do something like that. No, none. So when you when you have something that powerful, I I created it because I wish it existed. That's what I was looking for when I got rich, and it didn't exist. So, so I created it myself. Yeah. And and it's also and I'll say this now for any young man or any man who's serious about his journey or serious about himself, it's the most important place you can be. You're going to learn absolutely everything about the realities of Earth. Do not waste your time in some university. Do not waste your time reading books. Do not waste your time on YouTube watching some dork talk about Amazon FBA. Don't <laughs> be do, don't be an Crypto. idiot. Join the war room and you'll learn. And there'll be a there's a spiritual journey involved as well. Um, but every single person who joins the war room ends up being an absolute consummate professional. And that's that's the most profitable enterprise. Uh, how, how do you join? At cobratape.com, there's details. It's on my website. You go to cobratape.com. And it will explain what the war room is, how we work. We have meetings all around the world. We have meetups. In fact, we just had a meetup three days ago, impromptu. Usually they're planned in advance, but I had to talk to some guys and we sent a message 36 hours in advance. And we all went, oh, I had to talk to everybody, no phones. Uh, so there was no phones and we didn't want to be bugged. So we went out to the desert here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And in 36 hours, I think we got 35 men from around the world landed, but we wow. went to the desert, all with the black escalades, it's all filmed and stuff. It. Yeah. That was so, insane. So it's, it's, I it's, never saw that many black escalades. <laughs> it's a powerful network and, and we're, we're absolutely not really extremely wealthy. We don't break any laws. Yeah. You know, so for the FBI, the NSA, whoever's listening, we don't break any laws. Yeah. We're law abiding people who are very perspicacious and pay a lot of attention and are Just very dedicated. Grow. And we make sure that we look after ourselves and each other and, and our brotherhood. And uh, we're trying to create a better world for the people we care about. And that's how we work. All right. So I feel like one of the ways that you became so popular was by people resharing your videos. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, mm, I wouldn't say, I'd say, I'd say personally, I'd say a lot of the reason why they would reshare those videos is because they wanted they wanted to make some money, you know, with via affiliate marketing for the from the from Hustlers University. Yeah. So now does Hustlers University still exist? And because I know you're banned off Stripe, are you using another payment gateway now or like? Yeah. So Hustlers University was attacked by the Matrix when they attacked me. I heard Tristan said it's it's off now. No, oh, no. So I'll tell you the story. So Hustlers University. Firstly, let me explain to the people at home. They don't know what it is. Yeah. I had a school which primarily taught people how to make money online. Okay. The reason I had that school was so that everybody could afford the war room. Okay. So people would come to me and say, I want to be in the war room, but I can't afford it. So I say, okay, I'll teach you how to make the money to afford it. Mm. Nice and simple system. Yeah. So that way I can save anybody. I yeah. can save anyone who's inside the matrix. I can free anybody's mind. You can come two to me. Step. Yes, two steps, right? So it was $50 a month, mm. nice and cheap. And we taught modern wealth creation methods. We had some crypto, some stock. We had an affiliate program. We yeah. had 18 different ways 18 to make money ways. online. And you had to have nothing to start with. If you had internet and some time, you could make money. So... We had got up to 175,000 students. That's your largest amount you've made in one that's month. The, that's 175,000 students was the peak. We got up to 175,000 students at $50 Jeez. a month. So it was a fairly profitable enterprise. Yeah. I was uh, like, what? I don't know, 11, millions. 12 million a month or something. Um, but uh, so we were, we were doing well, but a lot of that money was obviously reinvested in the teaching, the professors, okay. the school. Like we were building the largest online educational platform on the planet. What's interesting is, Anybody with a brain can sit here and understand that attracting 175,000 people to the school is easy. What's hard is Maintain retaining. Them. And the fact that I retained that many people means that there's 175,000 people in the world who are making more money each month than they invested. Even if they invested $50 and only made $300 or $400, they were still making ROI. more yeah. than they invested. The ROI is huge. Yeah. No other university or school no. or educational platform is going to give you That's that ROI. That's still a crazy percentage. It's a, absolutely. So we were massively successful. And when the Matrix attacked me and insulted my character, they decided to also attack Huxley's University because they saw how successful it was. And a lot of the reviews 
made about it, people attacking it, they never even joined. Yeah. They just go and do a review and say, Hustle University is a scam because Andrew Tate's a bad guy. Yeah. And they never even joined, yeah. right? Or they join and be inside for 10 to 15 minutes, scroll around, not go to any of the, not speak to the professor, not watch any of the long format videos, not try any of the things we said, yeah. and then say, do a negative review because they wanted clicks and they understood the matrix was, at the time, the algorithm was favoring anyone who made a negative video about me. If you made a ne negative video about Andrew Tate, you, you got millions and millions of views. Mm. So they just start making up reasons saying the Hustle University is a scam and it's bad and it's detrimental. You're right, uh, our payment processing was removed and they also attacked the servers of hate you because they were matrix owned organizations but hate you is not dead we are still open okay. we're still thriving we still have students inside we have changed our payment gateway to one that i now fully own oh okay so i bought You're my safe. i bought my own payment gateway i bought my own bank okay i've started my own <laughs> uh so now i completely not really own it can't be it can't be attacked by the matrix and also we're rebranding soon we're changing the name to the real world because it's helping people escape the matrix and the real world comes out very shortly uh, you can find out more at corporatetake.com on the website. Yourself. Everyone who's in Hester's University will automatically move over to the real world for free. And then any other people want to join the real world, the price is going to be going up slightly because now that we control all of our own infrastructure, yeah, we, can, too much. We, we, can teach, well, we can teach things we couldn't teach before Okay. because we have all of our own infrastructure. So we're going to have the same 18 wealth creation methods from before plus new ones that we couldn't teach on Matrix-owned infrastructure. So they attacked it. They attempted to destroy it just like they attempted to destroy me and they have failed. Mm. They, they failed because if you're a person who's joined a school for $50 a month and you're making hundreds of dollars a month, are you going to quit because some idiot made a bad review? No. No, of course you're not. Of course not. So we, we're massively successful because we are competent yeah. and, we're the, and we have zero competition in the world. We're the only school you can join and the only goal is to make money. The primary goal is make money. We're not trying to make you sit there and do exams for qualification. No, yeah, make money. Yeah. And you'll make more money than you spend. It's yeah. a very simple mathematical yeah. equation. So they attempted to destroy us and they failed. At CobraTake.com, you can join the real world. And anybody who's serious about their education, I absolutely not re recommend they do that. And the life path, the trajectory we've put people on in life is beautiful. We've had people at 18, 19 join Hustlers University, six months later have their war room subscription, join the war room, two or three years later, you know, they're at Bugai. the meetups, they're here and they're driving a Lambo. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's truly Bugai, beautiful. <laughs> it's truly beautiful. I'm the only one with the Bugatti so far. <laughs> they can't join it. The, the well, Bugatti has to stay at their house. There's people in the war room richer than me, <laughs> okay. but uh, they're a little, perhaps a little bit more subtle. Than yeah, I am. But, uh, they like to move under the radar. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we were talking about people who got rich relatively quickly. A lot of those people are people who are into crypto. Yep. What do you think about cryptocurrency? Are you invested? Because you know, a lot of people, they got rich of doing it, but I feel like to a certain extent, like, yeah, okay. They put in money, it got like, whatever, like times hundred X, but still you would think that, okay, if it's so easy, how come people today are still not investing in it? You know, if, if, so like, I don't know, what do you think about cryptocurrency? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a proponent of crypto. I do use crypto, Bitcoin, ETH, the big ones. Okay. I think that chasing crypto pumps is now over. We're not, the bull runs over, the stupid money is gone. Most people don't understand about crypto that it's person versus person. I see they launch these coins and then they start a Telegram community. Mm. And then if you go in the community, Discord, yeah, if yeah. you get in the community, everyone's like, yeah, we're all in this together. No, you're not. No. You're not in this together. You, if you're buying, or if you're selling, if you buy crypto at a dollar and then you sell it at $10, someone bought it off you at $10. Yeah. Probably in that same Telegram. Probably in the same Telegram group. So you're literally stealing money from the other people in your community. The other people who believe in the project, yeah. you're stealing money from them. It's player versus player. They start these stupid communities so all of you sit there and don't dump so that the developer can dump. Yeah. You're all dummies. Yeah, all you guys, you're yeah. all dummies. Yeah. It's player versus player. And a lot of the dumb money is now gone. People who were stupid, who believed in all this they crap, they've lost all their money. Yeah. So now the only people left in crypto is the smart money, and that's very, very hard to steal, right? Yeah. So I think that the idea of chasing a pump right now is very foolish. Yeah. I also think that one of the detrimental things about crypto is that it recently made people a bunch of money. Yeah, sure, uh, in the last two to three years, or two, six months, at nine months, whatever it was, the bull run. But... The people who made money with crypto didn't learn any real skills. They didn't learn sales. They didn't learn marketing. So they didn't learn management. Okay. Didn't learn how to deal with stress. Didn't learn how to grow mm -hmm. a company. Didn't learn how to deal with taxes. They didn't, didn't struggle. Learn, they didn't learn they didn't anything. The they didn't struggle. Yeah. There was no pain. They bought a coin. They watched it go up. Mm. Now they tell the world how smart they are. They think they're a genius. They think they're too good to work, these people. Nah, I'm too smart to work. You don't understand. I know crypto. I bought this coin. My friend, every single coin went up. You're not a genius. Everything went up. All anything, of them yeah. went up. You could have bought anything. Yeah. yeah, you were in the right place at the right time. You made a little bit of money, but you've learned absolutely zero. 
And unfortunately, if you have money, but no lessons and you're still a dummy, that money is not gonna last long and you're gonna lose it. And the world we live in now is also hyper expensive. Like you make a couple hundred thousand dollars and you think you're rich. You lose 20% the same Uh, same day. Bro, like the amount of money you need nowadays to be considered rich is ridiculous. I was with Dan Bilzerian a couple weeks ago and I was telling him how quickly my life has changed. I used to go to a holiday for a week with mm-hmm. 500, 600 pounds, yeah. right, for the week. Yeah. When Dan messaged me and said, hey, let's hang out, he was in France, I was in Romania, I was like, cool. Yeah. Um, I had some cars in Germany, I had trucked over to wait for me there because the roads are nice. I organized yeah, my jet Germany. from Bucharest to, to France. I needed a security team to come with me. I hired the security team to come with me. I like to use my Romanian guys, so we had to get a bigger jet to accommodate them. By the time we jetted in with the with the security team, picked up the cars, everybody, six or seven people needed five-star hotel rooms. Everybody ate food. I sat and had a meeting with Dan. I took the cars for a spin around the mountains, went to a spa a little bit, jumped back on the jet with the entire security team, put the cars back on a truck to Germany and flew home. So from by the time I had a three-hour meeting with a friend, it cost me 400 grand. Oh my goodness. That's how expensive the world is at the top. Yeah. So we you're sitting there and you've made 200 grand on a crypto pump Something. and you think you think oh I'm, I'm rich you are a brokey and you haven't even made any you haven't even learned any lessons you're a dummy so i think crypto is bad for kids because it has a whole bunch of kids out here thinking they don't need to work hard they don't need to dedicate themselves they don't need to learn important lessons they can just chase a pump and win the lottery mm. and it ain't gonna happen that's whether you lose all their money so yeah. that's the bad thing about crypto and that's why i'll sit here right now and do a plug and say join the real world instead yeah. and join or join hustles university instead and learn real lessons that you can apply to anything so you'll never be broke mm. and have a real network like the war room so you can never be broke yeah. it doesn't matter if bitcoin goes to a million dollars or zero i'll make money either way yeah i'll, I'll make money either way because you not have skills. By, not, yeah, because I have skills and not by day trading, not by that. I'm just going to know things other people don't know before they know them. I'm just going to have opportunities identified and presented to me before other people have, have yeah. them. And it doesn't matter if Bitcoin goes down to zero or it goes up to $10 million a coin. Either way, I'm going to make in, insanely large sums of money because of my network and because I'm respected and because I know important people. And that's the problem with these crypto kids. They have none of that. Yeah. So I have a question. You have a lot of strengths. What would you say are some of your biggest strengths and like some of your biggest skills, some of your biggest weaknesses as Andrew Tate? As Andrew Tate, hmm. I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm pretty all encompassing when it comes to strengths and I've made sure of that. I, I, well, my, well, my father had a saying, which is now my saying as I'm the oldest Tate. <laughs> my unmatched perspicacity coupled with sheer indefatigability makes me a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. endeavor. And I stand by that. I do like to believe I'm a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. If someone were to come up to you and say, you have to have a skateboarding competition, but don't worry, the guy you're skateboarding against can't skateboard. You'd be like, cool. And then I turned up. Part of you would be like, oh, shit. Even I can't even skateboard. But, you, but part of you would be like, ah, oh, Tate. Tate, this guy. Yeah, this not this guy. You know, I'm just that guy. <laughs> He's pretty good. I'm just that guy who's just, I'm just good at stuff. Yeah. And uh, nobody wants to compete against me at anything. So I'm good at everything. My weaknesses, I've, I've strongly analyzed my weaknesses. Yeah. In fact, I've sat around with friends of mine and with people who I care about dearly and who care about me back and said, if I had to hurt me, how would I do it? If, if I decided to do damage to me in my life, how would I do it? Where are my weaknesses? It's been, it's been analyzed and talked about and discussed at length. Because you, you need to do that reflection. You, you have to know. Most people don't do that. No. Most people don't say, if someone wanted to ruin my life, how would they ruin it? Yeah. So I know all of my weaknesses. I know all my weak points. Obviously, I decide, I defend and guard them the best you can, but obviously not everything can be completely defended and guarded. I know what they are. I'm not gonna advertise them to the feral psychopaths of Earth. <laughs> okay. But I think as terms, in terms of how difficult a target on earth is i'm certainly one of the top hardest people on earth to damage mm-hmm. whether emotionally psychologically physically etc i'm extremely difficult to damage because i live a reality in which i'm very conscious of these things paranoid perhaps and i'm hard to get to most men you can just steal his girlfriend most men you just steal his chick exactly. you just steal his chick or just run up on him when he goes to the chicken chip shop and most men are so easy life. to hurt most men are most men you can just lie about in the media matrix attack them and they'll have a mental breakdown most men are so absolutely not mentally they'll say weak. sorry they'll, they'll yeah cry. They'll, they'll yeah they'll cry I, I did none of that stuff right um most men you can just message his girl you can just get a famous guy with a blue tick to message his girl and bam before you know it she's in his bed talking about how that man 
Like most men are absolutely not easy to hurt. They're controlled by all their emotions. Completely. But I, how do you detach yourself from your emotions? It's not about detaching yourself from your emotions. I, I feel every single emotion. It's just about so using, them, it's using them all in a positive direction. Yeah. If I feel extremely happy and excited, I'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard. If I feel absolutely depressed and distraught, I'm going to use that as endless energy and to motivation to do amazing things and work hard. It doesn't matter what you give me. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted yeah. and transferred. It doesn't matter what fuel you give me. If you give me diesel, petrol, kerosene, vodka, doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine. Hard work is going to come out. Absolutely. Success. That's all I know how to do. Yeah. That's all I know how to do. It doesn't matter what fuel you put in my engine. My engine only knows how to do one thing and that is succeed. That is only, that's all I know how to do. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't matter what you feed me with. I'm going to be massively successful regardless. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. Yeah. What's the exact definition of top G? Top G, top striker. Yeah. A top G is a I man. I want to put it in the dictionary. Yeah, that's a good idea. A top G is a man of impeccable perspicacity and sheer indefatigability who is a feared opponent. In any realm of human endeavor. Correct. That's a top G. That's a top G. It's, the first one was your dad. He was the original top G, the OG. OG. Yeah, and I'm, I am now the oldest Tate. I have the same name as him. So uh, Emory Andrew Tate II is gone. I am Andrew Tate III this year. And there'll be a day when Emory Andrew Tate IV is fighting the Matrix. This yeah. is the beauty of life. This I have is a question. Dest destiny and lineage. It's a bit sensitive, but I mean, I heard in a video where you spoke about it um, during the time of your your father, God rest his soul, his yep. funeral. Yeah. You you I think at that time you had some work going on. Yep. And maybe you could relay that story and. Yep. Yeah. So I missed my father's funeral because I just moved to Romania. I had uh, just invested every single penny I had in this enterprise. I was now the oldest man alive in the Tate family. I had to look after my mother and my siblings and take care of people. I did. I had to make a choice. Do I fly back to America and spend money and time and go to this funeral and you know waste a few weeks? Or do I sit here and just focus on this enterprise and make sure that it cannot fail? And we talked earlier about speed. Most people go, that, you know, it's only two weeks. It's only a week. It's only a week. The people who say it's only a week are the people who are broke. They don't value your time. That's the reason you're all poor, because you say it's only a week. So, oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it later. It's only an hour. It's only a day. It's only a minute. You are competing against people like me. We do not waste a second. So I had to make a decision. And I decided that as the oldest man in the family, it's more important that I achieve financial stability for all of us than to go and pay respects to my father and his funeral because I paid respect to him every single day of his life and I pay respect to his memory every no. single day now and I pay respect to him by being monumentally successful. The reason my father is talked about and discussed at length is because of the absolutely amazing son I've become. Yeah. I am keeping him alive forever by working so hard, by becoming so unique and individual and fantastic and humble. <laughs> the world asks me about yeah. my upbringings and then my father's memory is kept alive. So I made, I know I made the right decision. Yeah. And I know he's happy with the decision I made. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people would have gotten emotional and decided, oh, I had to go to the funeral and had a breakdown and went to the funeral and been sad, et cetera, et cetera. And you did what your dad thought would work. I did what do. I was taught to do, which yeah. is perform. Yeah. That's what I was taught to do. I was upset, obviously. I was sad, obviously. I was heartbroken, of course. But I took all of that energy and I, I worked harder than I've ever yeah. worked. I, I worked 22-hour days for months because I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And I became one of the most successful people on the planet. Is that, would you say that's how you get over a, a tragic loss like that? I think that <sighs> any emotion you feel should be converted into positive influence. Yeah. yeah. You should do good things with any emotion you feel. I, I can't, what else are you going to do with it? Quite and this yeah. is a genuine question. Yeah. What else? If, if let's say your, your wife breaks your heart, if you're not going to work, you can't sleep anymore. Mm. You're upset. She's running around with a new dude. You see her Instagram story. She's got some new guy. You're furious and you're, you're angry and you're jealous and you're bitter. You have all of this inside of you, but you're not going to go to the gym and work hard and become so fantastically in shape and so rich and so powerful that no girl ever leaves you again. You're not going to do that. No. What are you going to do with it? Text her? <laughs> Try and explain to her? She doesn't care. Like you, do, you can write the most perfect English. You can write the most beautiful words ever constructed. Forget Shakespeare. Convincing, you can do, it doesn't matter. She doesn't care. Mm. She just doesn't she care. She's distracted. She, she forgot about you. She forgot about you. So what are you going to do with all of that inside of you if it's not positive? Well, it's going to consume you and you're going to end up self-destructive or you're going to embarrass yourself or you can take all of that and put yourself in a position where it never happens to you again. Yeah. Those are the choices. So 
what's the most intelligent choice to make? Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't understand how many humans function in the world today. I don't get people who don't think like me. I, I, I don't understand it. I'm like, well, then how, do, how have you survived this long? Life is hard. Life is difficult. I, maybe I've just been unlucky, which I don't believe in, but I've had so much trauma and bad events and negativity and stress and all these things that have happened to me. And I've used all of it to be monumentally su successful. If I wasn't that way inclined with the workload that God put on my shoulders, I'd just be in a ditch somewhere. Yeah. I just would have killed myself by now. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how people are functioning. If you're not thinking like me and you're going through life with any other mindset, you've been extremely fortunate that God smiled on you and allowed you to sit around most of the time doing jack shit and you have yet to be punished for that. Yeah. I, I could never have lived that life. If yeah. I was a bit lazy or a bit, you know, It'd or I was a bit of a snake or if I lied to people, I'd be dead by now. Yeah. Like, so a lot of these people are just absolutely and utterly blessed by God that they managed to go through life with such a non-competitive mindset and they still breathing. Like, yeah. I, and I don't get, I, I don't understand how people can think any other way. Yeah. I've spoken to dudes and like, yeah, you know, I had a bad couple months. Why? Oh, my girl left me. You've wasted months. You've wasted months over some. <laughs> like you had, you had the, think of how much God loves you to have given you the, the grace and given you the opportunity to waste months of human time over some chick. Like talk about blessed head to toe. If I waste months, empires are going to collapse. I'm going to end up in a cell or dead if I waste months. I have things to do every single day. day. Yeah. I can't yeah, waste right. a second. Yeah. Like these people are just absolutely inf infinitely blessed. And their mindset is a product of that because they're, they're spoiled children. Absolutely spoiled children. If you're going through life with any other mindset besides a hyper competitive one where you're capable of competing with some of the most dangerous men on the planet in all their forms, me and my network and also my competitors. Mm. If you don't have that mindset, then you have to understand that you are spoiled. Yeah. You're spoiled by your reality because there's a whole bunch of people out here daily who fail. There are men out here who fail daily and they have yet to feel the true consequence for it. They fail to go to the gym when they know they should have gone to the gym. They fail because they forgot their keys and it took them 10 minutes to find him. They fail because they replied to a question they got sent on WhatsApp the wrong way. They fail because they didn't smile when they were supposed to. They didn't say please and thank you to that person who helped them. They fail because they didn't say hi to that girl who's looking at them out the corner of their eye. They just fail perpetually. They go through life missing every opportunity and just failing, failing, failing. And somehow we've built a society which is so soft and God is so giving and so graceful that they still have a place to eat and a, a somewhere to sleep yeah. and they're still surviving that that shows how nice god is yeah. because it, it, before this society truthfully if you were that level of failure yeah. you would be dead survival of, the it's survival of the fittest and none of these men out here are fit no. their mindset isn't fit their reality isn't fit their they're absolutely they're failures physically, they're, they're failures yeah. and they're just failing every single day i'm like oh but you know what tomorrow i'll go to the gym yeah. you've been failing your whole life that's all you've done is fail. And then you sit and wonder why people like me absolutely and utterly outcompete you. It is so easy to become a top tier male in the world today because the competition is so ridiculously low. There are 2% killers like me and everybody else is amateur. Head to toe amateur. They can't even pay attention to anything. They can't try at anything. They're amateurs. And it's, it's, it's really mind blowing to me because I've tried with all of my computational power to imagine having a mindset different to mine. And I just can't see a reality worth having. I can't see a reality worth living. I can't see how you're gonna build a life worth experiencing if you have any other mindset. I, I can't see it. Yeah. I've never met somebody with a fantastic life who did not completely and utterly believe in themselves. I've never seen somebody massively succeed and they didn't believe in themselves. Ever. I've never seen somebody who just allows life to happen to them and become blown off course by some sadness end up doing massively monumental and important things. I've mm. never seen it. It's never happened. It does, and it's never going to happen because it's competitor. It's like crypto. It's player versus player. Right. And there's people like me out here. So don't when that when that breaks your heart and you take a few months off and she ends up on my jet and it's, I get rid of her and I don't give a shit. It was because you never took those months off. You were always working. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And if she leaves me afterwards, let's say she just you likes have, to leave men, more. I don't care. Yeah. I'm still working. You're still crying. You can't possibly ever beat me. I will I'll continue to beat you into eternity, as will my bloodline. You will sit and pay the price for the rest of your human years. Even your ancestors above you are disappointed in you, and your offspring for the rest of your lineage will look up and say, my great-great-great-grandfather was a loser because I broke his heart, and now we've been broke ever since. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reality. But you know what's crazy? Because I feel like your life, the way when you talk about it, it's so much struggle. It's so much hardship. 
But still, you consider yourself the most luckiest person. I'm absolutely the luckiest man on the planet. Because still now, you still have a lot of hardship. You're getting hit from this direction, from that direction. You know what I mean? So how do you... First of all, if you could mention some of the moments where you're really struggling sure. in your life, where you're really like in threats and you're like really yeah. stuck, and how you consider yourself lucky even despite all this. I'll tell you why I'm absolutely lucky. And I, I don't want to give too many details away, but in my previous life, I was certainly living... I knew some very dangerous people. I've done some dangerous things. There's been a few expose documentaries on the kind of things I was involved in previously. I've had attempts on my life. People have tried to stab me. I've had people try to kill me. I've had uh, members of my family attempts on them. I've had a very certainly difficult life. I don't consider any of the mental stress of this recent matrix attack anywhere near comparable to the physical altercations no and, and things that have happened to me. But, but, but the, reason, the reason I'm the luckiest man on earth is because God has given me endless building blocks to build a superhero. I, he's, he, he's given me endless power. He's given me endless motivation. What did we say? Yeah. He's given me endless. I have endless sources of power. I can sit here right now and recall events that will prevent me from sleeping for two to three days. That gives me a superpower that other men do not have. They want to go to sleep. They're tired. I, I can stop being tired for, for days at a time. I can just have a thought. I can remember. I can sit, close my eyes, and use the power of my brain to vividly remember events, and I will not sleep for days. So how You don't can, need any drugs. You don't need anything. I, I've never taken a drug in my life. I've never tried cocaine in my life. I've never tried weed in my life, ever. Wow. I drink a lot of coffee. I wow. smoke cigars, a bit yeah. of vodka, but I've never tried a narcotic in my life. Wow. So God has given me an endless source of power. And when people come to me and say, oh, this happened, I'm really sad, or my heart broke, or this bad thing happened to me, I say, good, good. That's Thank right. the Lord that he's given you this endless source of motivation. You're wasting it. Yeah. That's your problem. But it's been given to you. Nitrous oxide has been given to you. You just have to use it in the correct way. So I'm the luckiest man in the world because uh, all the bad things that happened to me have given me all the building blocks to become the most fantastic man on the face of the planet. Yeah, you spoke about smoking. So uh, you smoke cigars, right? Correct. Shisha? Yep. Sometimes. Okay. So, but vaping you hate, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And why is that? Well, she's just tobacco. Yeah. Cigars are tobacco. Right. It's a plant. We basically kind of know what it is. Yeah. I don't smoke weed at all, but I kind of get, it's a plant, whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's escapism. That's, I'd say, I'd say there's a difference. I'd say like, I'd say that tobacco is like more of a stimulant and I'd say that that weed is more of an intoxicant. Correct. Well, the, the reason I don't touch any narcotics at all is because Firstly, I was a, a professional athlete and my blood was tested. Okay. I'm now 35 years old without ever having tried a drug ever. Is there any point in starting now? No. Like it's, I've lived my whole life without ever trying these things. Why start now? Yeah. Also, when I look at some of the most degenerate, stupid, ridiculous people on the planet, they're all drug users. They're all, they all use drugs. It's, very, it's not very often I meet a man who's completely head to toe, has his life in order, and he likes drugs. I, a lot of rich people take cocaine, yes. And I do know them and some of them. But... I still think they'd be better without, without cocaine. cocaine yeah. You know, that's just genuinely a vice. But if you go to a festival full of brokies, full of peasants and peons, full of people who don't try very hard at life, and they sit there and they idolize these false idols given to them by the Matrix, and they stand in a crowd full of millions of other people, like an insignificant peasant, Rave. and jump up and down, wah, yeah, yeah. Diplo, wah, whoever. Escapism, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just complete peasant mindset. If you look at these people and say, do you like drugs? Guess what they say? I love it. Oh, yeah. So, so I avoid, I don't want to go anywhere near the peasantry, right? Yeah, so, because that's what it is. It's disgusting and it's, it's peasantry. So that's why I don't take drugs. And uh, the reason I don't like vape is because I don't think that vape is even remotely natural because a tobacco is a plant. Okay, cool. But if you manage to put chemicals inside of a little container that tastes like blueberry Water. ice. Yeah. What even is blueberry ice? Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. It's not even a flavor. It's just, it, it's just words. Yeah. And and then you taste it and you go, that does taste like blueberry ice. Yeah. <laughs> and how, then they it, made it? how did they pull that off? Yeah. I, I can't believe it's possibly good for me. Add in the price that it cost. Add in the fact that it costs a dollar yeah. and comes deep from the heart of China. Like you're like, yeah. you think they give a shit no. about the West just puffing away on this <laughs> petrochemical? They don't care. They're happy. Yeah. So if you're going to smoke, at yeah. least smoke something, you know, it was grown. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know. I'd say, you know, like they, they say, I mean, they say the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Yes. And with with tobacco, I mean, there's scientific studies about what it is. But with, with vape, we don't really know what's the problem. Well, the reason I smoke is not because I'm addicted, because I have an iron mind and I can blink and cure my brain and stop smoking completely. In fact, when I, there's certain places I go to in the world where I don't smoke for months at a time. I, I'm not addicted to anything. The yeah. reason I smoke is because nicotine is good for your testosterone level. Okay. That's the reason I smoke. I smoke because I like the drug of nicotine because nicotine is actually... 
positive. The reason I drink coffee is not because I'm addicted because caffeine is a miracle drug. Yeah. Caffeine it's good is, for your heart. Caffeine's a miracle. Yeah. I drink coffee. endless coffee. And of course the matrix will come along and say, too much coffee's bad for you, too much meat's bad for you. They say anything to make you weak and stupid. Yeah. Ca- ca- caffeine, people don't understand that coffee changed the world. Before coffee and caffeine, we were addicted, not addicted, we were living our lives in rhythm with the sun. We got up when the sun came up, we went down when the sun came down. We couldn't go against that. We didn't go against it very much. With the industrial revolution and caffeine, the introduction of caffeine, we now had night shifts, we now had double shifts. Think about this. If If a job introduces a coffee break, if a company says, take, stop working and drink this coffee, that's because the coffee you have is worth the time they let you not work because you make up for it plus some. That's how powerful it is. And what's actually interesting about me is when I think back, my entire reality is caffeinated. I haven't been awake without caffeine in years. I drink coffee every single day. So I thought about this and I thought, maybe life's better without caffeine. So I took a week off of coffee and there was zero advantage. I didn't sleep any better. Yeah. I felt pissed off. I didn't feel like I could focus as well. I was more tired, but I couldn't sleep any better. It was weird. I was just like, this isn't me. Now, obviously, I'm still a hyper competitive individual. I still went to the gym. Course, I still did yeah. my work. I'm still the top G. But I didn't feel as good. No benefits. There was no benefits. Yeah. So after a week, I had a cup of coffee, and it was like, the miracle is back. <laughs> it's the it's, it's develop a coffee addiction. It's fantastic. There's nothing bad about caffeine. But I have 10 to 15 coffees a day every single day and I will do to the day I die. But and so so to, just to finish off for my vices, sure. I, coffee is not a vice. I want the caffeine. Smoking is not a vice. I want the nicotine. These are drugs that I believe are genuinely good for me. The only vice, I guess, is alcohol. And I and although it looks like in some of my videos I drink a lot, that I can drink a lot. I must have the genetic disposition. I can out drink almost anybody on the planet. I don't truly drink very often. And you don't get drunk. And I no, I'm a professional. So for me to get drunk, it has to be a controlled, closed environment, or I have to have a security team. Mm. I, I, I I will not get drunk in open. Uh, never. Mm. It's either in my house with armed guards outside, yeah. or it's on a yacht, which very is sophisticated. We, yeah, it's, it's on a yacht, which is in the middle of the ocean. Or I, it's very difficult for me to get drunk because I don't like to lose control of reality like that. And and nine times, in fact, not nine, nine point nine 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 times out of ten, if I'm drinking, I either have a weapon on me or somebody next to me does. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah but I think the you know you're talking about coffee, but I'd say the one bad thing was like the problem is the more you have, the the less effect it gives you. So then you, the more you need to have. Well, that's what you think. Right. You think it gives you less of effect, but when you quit it, because but your body builds a tolerance. No, it doesn't. To to it. Nah. I, I stick to the base. I have 10 to 15 coffees every day. That's what I have every day. It's the same number. And I I don't think I've built a tolerance to it because when I stopped drinking it, I felt the difference. So right. I know that it's doing something. Yeah. It does something. I quit. It was only two weeks ago I did this one week no coffee thing. It was garbage. And I and I did it because I thought, you know, you know you see these idiots online. They're like, yeah, take cold say. showers, don't yeah. drink coffee, read books. They're all I knew they're full of shit yeah. because none of them have anything. They're all brokies. Yeah. And if I were to ever meet any of these people in person, these self help gurus, I could grab them by their necks and I could ring them to death. I know that they're not met, right? Yeah. I could destroy all of them. So I'm not interested in really talking to any of them, but I thought about the coffee thing and I thought, well, my entire reality is caffeinated. Let me try try life without it. Mm. And it was terrible. Yeah. (laughs) Coffee is a gift from God. Caffeine is beautiful as is nicotine in just as much as possible. And for any doctor who says that it's unhealthy, meet me in the cage and we'll talk about health. Because if I can still beat the shit out of you, then I don't want to hear your opinions on health. Health, yeah. Because I think I'll do just fine against any doctor who says coffee is a bad idea. So, you know, you talk a lot about gym. There's a lot of, maybe you'd say like top Gs or like big people who have made it in life career-wise, money-wise, who have never been to the gym. You know, you look at, like, for example, someone like Elon Musk, like, quite chubby, you know? Or, like, for example, not like he was a good person, but, like, Pablo Escobar made a lot of money. Big, fat guy. You know, a lot of the people who've made a lot of money, I love gym. I believe it's, like, really good. I go almost every day. But for, like, two years. But, like, what about these other people who've made it without Yeah, firstly, I have nothing bad to say about Elon because Elon's top E, right? I got got to show respect where it's due. Top G, Elon. (laughs) Yeah, he's top E. But um, (laughs) I think that a strong body is a strong mind. Yeah. I think that going to the gym is important for your mental health. It is for me anyway. I train absolutely every single day. I am not on any kind of steroid. I'm not on testo- TRT. I'm not on testosterone replacement Trend, therapy. Yeah. I'm not on any kind of pill. I don't even take creatine. I don't take protein powder. Nothing. 
And a lot of people don't believe that about me. A lot of people say, oh, you know, because you know, there's pictures of me where I'm, I'm a, I'm a big guy, yeah. you know, I look a bit skinny in a shirt, but they look at me without a shirt on. They're like, wow, you're, you're big. What, what are you taking, you're bro? Yeah. What are you taking? I'm like, What's your cycle? coffee, cigars, a <laughs> lot yeah. of meat yeah. and hard training. Yeah. And I'm 35 and I've never had a single injection in my body ever. God, God is my witness. And I say this on podcasts because there's some people who believe I, I'm not natural for some reason. And it's kind of a compliment. But um, they believe I'm not natural. And I say this now openly. So if I ever get busted doing these things, you can sit and, and call me up on it. True. I mean, Logan Paul is a steroid head. He's, he's a big, I've, I've told him before, I'll fight him if he can piss in a cup. But he can't because he's, he's massively oh, to steroids. To? Me, and, me and him were back and forth. It's a long story with him. And he was kind of cool. And then he, when the Matrix attacked me, he cucked out and became a complete <laughs> But like he's talking about a boxing match. Yeah, you have to pass a drugs test. Because if I start taking drugs like you are, Logan, I'm going to be, a, I'll be an animal i'm god's favorite right i'm an animal already imagine yeah. i was taking drugs on top Jeez. i'd be an animal so he's sitting there injecting himself to just get a little bit of muscle um but i i never take anything i've never taken anything and i say that god is my witness so i just train hard and i only train for maybe 45 minutes to an hour each day every single morning is one of the first things i do uh, i wake up and i train and what's amazing is i never feel like doing it Bro. I never wait. I never want to do it. I wake up and I have work to do. My phone's going off. I got a busy day. I have to do stuff. I, I, the, I'm in a big mansion. There's a Lambo outside. Yeah. There's a nice pool. There's three chicks in bikinis chilling. Yeah. They're like, Hey, breakfast is ready. And I'm like, Nope, 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 Nope. I'm going to train, train. and I don't want to, but I still do it to. because that's the part of being Bro. a man is doing what you don't want to do. But yeah, no, I totally agree. So I want to ask you now, give us, give me a few stories. I love your stories. Craziest story involving a girl, craziest fight story, craziest thing you ever saw, and the last one, if you can give me a crazy story which you've never mentioned before, ever. All my stories are very long, that's the problem. They're all like, <laughs> oh, thir yeah. they're all like 30 minutes they're long. They're podcasts on their own. <laughs> they're podcasts on their own. What was the first one? The first one was craziest story involving a girl. I've told this story before, I think somewhere you have to find it. It was when I met, when I first went to Romania, I was in a town called Constanta. And there was a girl there who I met who was truly beautiful. She was Ukrainian. And she, I, to tell the story properly is so long. It takes half an hour to get the context. Oh, should we skip that one then? Uh, no, it takes half an hour to get the context. But basically it's the story of how me and her were talking and I, she was trying to get information out of me and I was paranoid and didn't want to give her too much information, but she liked me and I styled it off and I worked out that she was working for the club and she was getting everyone to spend a whole bunch of money all the time. Uh, and I'm the only guy who didn't spend money on her and we ended up having a, a summer of love. But it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting story when it's told properly in its, in its entirety. Yeah, because it's weird. It's, it's a strange one, yeah. And I, I tell you what we should do. We I'll tell the overview of all the five stories. And then we'll, in the comments to people who want to hear which story they want to hear the most, I'll do a nice 45 minute explanation of the story in depth. <laughs> so the craziest story involving a girl was her, but she was a very interesting case because it showed the power of female manipulation. In fact, I've changed my mind, I'm gonna tell the story. So I'm in Constanta, Romania, right? I'm in Romania. I was there, this is maybe eight or nine years ago. At the time, there weren't so many foreigners who went there. I was in a club and there was an absolutely beautiful girl and I went over to her and said, hello, it's nice to meet you. You're absolutely gorgeous. And we start talking to her back and forth. And I said, can I buy you a drink? Mm. And she said, yes, I'd like this uh, bottle of champagne. And at the time I didn't have the kind of money I had now. So I said, ah, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna buy you a bottle of champagne. I don't normally drink champagne. Uh, I've bought this. <laughs> Um, I like beer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't say beer, but I styled it off. I said, oh, so said, you can't really say that, right? So you have to be smooth about it. I was mm. like, oh, champagne. We should enjoy a bottle of champagne together one day, but I'm about to leave. I just want to come say hello. So we'll do it sometime in the future. I, you have to be smooth mm. about these things. James Bond, right? Because I didn't want to buy a $1,500 bottle of champagne. Yeah. Um, so I styled it off, got her number, left. We we're texting back and forth. She seemed like a really nice girl. Absolutely and utterly beautiful. My standards are ridiculously high because I'm not a peasant like everybody else. I, I, I'm only associated with women. I heard only highest. blondes. I can have anything I want. Mm. And I kind of like when they all match. So um, I, I live with very, very high standards. So she's truly, she was truly beautiful. The next day I met her, we had lunch. And again, uh, she tried to kind of hint at this drink. And again, I, I styled it off. That night I saw her on another man's table and they were buying all this champagne. And I was kind of a little bit annoyed because I thought I bagged a, like a really yeah. beautiful girl and she she's she now on this table and she's all the champagne's coming. So like, whatever it is, what it is, I left it. I still text her a little bit back and forth. 
And it became this running joke. She was like, why won't you buy me a, bottle, a single bottle of champagne? You're a man. Why won't you buy me a bottle, single, single bottle of champagne? And she was also in, asked, she was quite inquisitive. She was like, so what's your job? What are you doing here? Mm. She's trying to ask me lots of questions and I wouldn't answer any of them. I'd always style it off with a clever answer. Yeah. Like, what do you, what's your job? It's like, oh, I'm a priest or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we ended up becoming really good friends throughout the summer. And eventually she came open to the fact that she's there specifically to make men spend money. And she had a script and she said, you're the only, when she, she drunk a little bit of champagne that night, to be fair, she was a little bit drunk. She said, you're the only man I've ever met. She who opened didn't, up. Yeah. You're the only man I've ever met who didn't follow my script, Andrew. I said, what's the script? And she showed me in her, it was Facebook at the time. She showed me in her Facebook inbox. The man would get her number. They'd meet the next day. Then after about two or three dates, she'd say, I can't fall in love with somebody who lives far away. Last time, I've only been with one man in my whole life. Last time I was with a man like this, my heart was broken. And she'd copy and paste this long message. The guy would start begging for her back. She would wait about a day and a half and then hit him back and go, okay, I'll come meet you, but I don't want to come on my own because it's too, it's, I'm falling in love with you. I want to bring some friends and we'll go to this place. And they'd go and spend more money on more girls, more champagne, more, more, more meals. And it was just script and every man was falling for it in exact order and it was Every copy time. and paste messages and every single dude fell for it just Same chasing thing. this girl promising her anything taking her and all her friends to whatever place she needed to go that day for the commission and she, this is like eight nine years ago and she said she was making like 20 to twenty five thousand dollars a month in commissions and she's some ukrainian chick. she's like 19 like her bought her Jesus. family a house Whoa. but like 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 literally in like enriched her family top off g the back yeah top g yeah she was absolutely amazing at manipulating but it just showed how stupid men were every single man was falling for the same trick all of it head to toe mm. and uh after that we, we got a bit closer and she was uh we, we fell in love let's say and it was kind of funny because uh, we spent the whole summer together. I never bought her a drink. <laughs> I never bought her one. No way. It became a thing where I said, I'm not buying you a thing. Because you didn't you want to be one of those guys. Tap water only. <laughs> so I was like, I'll get you tap. You want tap water? And she was like, oh, I made a big so joke of it. Joke, yeah. she, she was buying the drinks because she had, she had, she had more money than me. So um, yeah, that's the cr one of the craziest stories involving. But you have girl. to stand out. So they just want someone to stand up. I think it's, yeah. I mean, there's, it, there's, it was going on for weeks. There's a lot of nuance to it. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying they don't, I'm, I'm not saying don't buy girls drinks. In fact, if I meet a girl now and she wants a drink, I'll certainly buy her one. It was just a very unique scenario, mm. unique circumstance that kind of led into a yeah. story. But the night I was, the night she was going through those Facebook messages, it was crazy how quickly and instantly men will simp and beg and cry over a girl they've known for three days promising, yeah. oh, we're going to be special. I'll take care they of you. They think she's the one. Da -da -da. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. Do you believe in the one? I don't, I think it's just compromise. Yeah. Every, I, I there's, I don't think there's ever going to be one person on so the planet you're truly business. compatible with. I think there's going to be, you know, a few. And, uh, if you have your life in order as a man, truly and completely in order, then you're compatible with a lot more people. I think that if you're a man and you're struggling to find somebody you're compatible with, that's probably because you're a degree, you're a loser. If your life's in order, then you're compatible with, with a lot of women. Like me, me, for example, I don't need a woman to mother me. I don't need a woman to motivate me, to tell me to stop playing video games. I don't need her to do anything for me. I need her to be happy, uh, positive, protect my spirit, pray for me, mm. maybe little things, make me a coffee, some kind of small gesture. But my money's right, my yeah. motivation's right, my life is right. And if she is associated with me, by proxy, she's gonna have a fantastic life. I can't fly on my jet and put her Alone. on an easy jet. Yeah. Like she's gonna end up on jets, yeah. she's gonna end up in the five star hotels, she's gonna end up not having to worry about money, she's gonna end up in the best restaurants. Yeah. By proxy, she's yeah. gonna have a very fantastic life. So you'll you'll find that if your expectations of a woman are for her to be happy and you have a lifestyle that makes her happy, a lot of women are pretty happy yeah. and you get along with basically all of them. It's kind of, a, it's kind of amazing how that works. It only, it takes a very special type of character to still be dislikable in those kind of scenarios. Mm, yeah. Whereas if your, your life is less perfect or your reality is less impressive, boring, then, or, yeah. then yeah, then you need a girl who's happy to be bored or ha and then it becomes harder. Yeah. You know? But I, yeah. I don't have any of those problems. Uh, uh, craziest fight story. It could be street or in the ring. Yeah. I can't, I can't tell the story of, uh, all right, I'll tell I'll tell a very rough, rough version of it. Um, it's exclusive. Yeah, I'm gonna miss a lot of details. I was about 24, I think, and I can't say why, but I had a problem with this guy, and uh, we were arguing. Sorry, wait, was this during the kickboxing time? I was kickboxing, yeah. Okay. But I was also kickboxing doesn't make money like boxing, right? When you're kickboxing, this is I was world I was like one time world champion. You're making like 
30, 40, 50 grand to fight, but you're fighting like twice a year. And it's, 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 yeah. I mean, towards the end, I was getting five, six fights a year and I was doing better. But when you're fighting like twice a year and you have to pay your coach and your taxes, mm. you're living in London, you're not rich. So I was making some money on the side and I had a, a disagreement with this guy and we were kind of texting back and forth and uh, he stopped replying to me. He totally stopped replying. Cool. That was it. And I was like, okay. And I texted him a few more times and he, he totally stopped replying to me. And about a week and a half later when I was walking to my car, he tried to stab me. I was walking to my car. Even to this day, if I walk to my car at night, especially if it's raining, I, I, uh, I, I panic a little bit. PTSD. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I was walking to my car and I heard footsteps behind me. This is one of the reasons I hate headphones. And I, anyone I see in headphones is a fucking idiot because you are so killable with headphones in. You think you look cool with your AirPods in. I can sneak up behind you with a chainsaw, you dummy. Like anyone who, anyone who has AirPods or headphones in is a soft target. Just distracted. I heard it first. I heard feet moving quickly, and as I turned, I've got a scar here on my hand. We can see the blade oh, in my hand. I, I turned and I took the blade in the hand, and uh, if that was my neck, I'd be dead. Had you had missed that hand, he had, had his hand made in a different position. Yeah, I, I could have easily died. Um, oh my! Goodness. I hit him, but it was sloppy. I'll, I'll admit it was a bit sloppy. He wobbled. He took a step back, but now we're facing each other. But because I was bleeding so much, because my finger basically came yeah. off, because I was bleeding so much, I thought I'd been stabbed properly. Okay. And I ran. Um, but I, I could have been dead. And the only reason I'm not is because I heard him coming. I didn't see him coming. And that's, that's why to this day, if I, if I sit in public and I see somebody with AirPods in, I feel nervous for them. If I, I can't explain it. I get anxious. It's like seeing somebody touching a chain, about to touch a chainsaw. Like you're, you're like, whoa, whoa don't do that. When I, yeah, yeah, when I see somebody and they're like, I'm like, you and you are to, so killable. They're walking to the street like this. Yeah, like, dude, just, it's unbelievable uh, because I heard it coming. And, and uh, if I walk to cars at night on my own now, especially if it's raining, I, I, I have to check back and, and that thing. So that was, that was a story. But that's not a fight. That's, that's the thing about the real world is that the real world is violent. And you'll often see that the idea of fighting is misunderstood. Even now in the war in Ukraine, I guarantee most of the men who got killed were never in a fight. You're, in, you're, you're doing your job. They never saw it coming. You, know, you didn't stand a chance. They didn't yeah. even know they're dead, right? You're doing your job and bang. Yeah. Very few were in a fight and then died. Yeah. Less, than, no less than 5%. The truth is about the world and violence is that there's very rarely combat. If he would have got me in my neck, I was a world champion kickboxer. How, how, mm -hmm. what, how, what combat would there have been? I would be so How many muscles you have? Yeah, be, I would have died. Yeah. So the idea of fighting is misunderstood. The world is a violent place and violence is never fair. Yeah. And, and anyone who says, oh, I do jujitsu, you're a dummy. Because if somebody wants you dead, they will kill you. Will kill you. And I'm lucky there was only him. You know, like nowadays they come in groups of 10 and then, yeah. then you die. Yeah, 100%. That's it, you, you will chance. die. And that's why I am the way I am. And that's why I also understand there's not a man on the planet who I couldn't get if I didn't want to get him. If somebody hurt my family, I could get him. There's not a man on the planet I could not get. And, and, I, know, and I also know there's men in the world today who, who are thinking we'll try and get Tate. There are groups of men who wake up each day and they don't want me to breathe anymore. And you have to anticipate that and do your very, very best to prepare for that. The world is a is a dangerous place. The world is a dark place. And there are people out there that, that are evil. And yeah. I don't think many people are actually understand how truly evil some men can be. Mm -hmm. um, it's inside of us. And yeah, that's my fight story. But I don't, I don't like the idea of fighting, especially on the street. I will do my absolute de best to avoid and de-escalate. And if it gets past the point of de-escalation, then it goes to pure violence for me. I don't believe in fair fights. I don't believe in, uh, hey, bro, see you outside. I don't believe in any of that shit. I'll pull the strap and just, just end all. I'm not playing games with anybody because it's winners, it's winners and losers. Yeah, and exactly. Honestly, you're... Yeah. So one of the most recent interviews you did, it was got very heated. It was like uh, the Piers Morgan interview. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of those clips are going viral. Um, I feel like it was a complete, like, very well, very unorganized. Yeah. He never let you speak. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that whole thing? Because that's like the most re recently, like the biggest thing you've, the biggest uh, interview. Yeah, it was done. an attempted uh, character assassination. 99.6% of all of the comments on the video are positive towards For you. me. Commentate W. Yeah, commentate W. So 99.6%, I know that because the war room analyzed it. So it was a PR win. Uh, I was deliberately softer than I could have been. I could have destroyed him. But the Matrix is looking for new reasons to attack me, and I'm not going to give them rope to attempt to hang mm -hmm. me with. So I knew that that was a Matrix-led attack. Because you were very silent. Yeah, I was, I was, it was a Matrix-led attack, and I, was, I adjusted accordingly. 
and it turned out to be a massive PR victory for me. Yeah. So thank you very much, Piers Morgan. I you win. did it well. I win. Yeah, you won. <laughs> why would you? That's why you agreed to do it, right? You knew. I, I knew it was a trap. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was a setup, of course. Like your dad said, I you I let their lies. Yeah, I allow manipulation to find out where my enemy wants me to go. Then I use my mind to break the trap and punish the perpetrators. That's another one of his quotes, and he's absolutely not right. I, I still do that to this day. I'll sit and watch the news head to toe. I'll watch it. Ah, oh, new variant. Ah, oh, be afraid of the new variant. I need 17 injections. Okay, let me see here. Let me, let me watch this head to toe. I'll watch all of it. I'll understand. I allow manipulation to find out where the enemy wants me to go. That's what they want to think. And Because if you don't know where they want you to go, you might end up there on accident. And you don't know where you should be on the other side. Correct, right? If you completely ignore the enemy's attacks to manipulate you, you might end up where they want you to be on accident, yeah. right? So I watch it. Where? What do you want me to believe? Let me watch it. Okay, I understand. This is what you want. Okay. Bullshit. Damn. Next. I'm Not like, doing that. I'm the opposite. <laughs> Completely. You have to allow them, allow manipulation to find out where your enemy wants me to go, then use your mind to, to break the trap. So I, I allow people to try all the time so I can understand their aims and goals very, very effectively. I have to understand exactly what they're trying to get out of me so that I can make sure that they fail. Yeah. So, you know... We talked a lot about your dad on this podcast, and you've talked about him a lot. But about your mom, wh how, what role did she play in your life? My mother is a fantastic mother. Yeah, yeah. she was. She's still, she's still alive. Still alive. You yeah. still see her? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I take care of her. She's rich now. Yeah, I, I send her money, and she panics. She's like, "This is too much." Oh, she has like a panic attack. I'm like, "Chill, buy a Lambo." <laughs> um, yeah, she uh, she's good. She was a good mother. How does she, she feel about where you are now with all this commo like commotion? She's enormously proud of me. She always knew I'd end up here. You know, I remind her of my dad. She knew who I was going to be. Revolutionary. Yeah, but she's always, she was enormously proud of me, but she doesn't ever give me any kind of advice in any way. No. Um, I'm the man, right, of the house. I'm, the, I'm, I'm old and big enough now. She doesn't call me really with, I think you should, or it's very much like... Moral support. Uh, yeah. I'm, are you okay? Yeah. Top G. Don't worry about it. I got it. Okay. I hope you know what you're doing. I, I know what I'm you, doing. You would cool. never, in any case, you would never like show her any like weakness or any like, you'd just be like... Yeah, I mean, uh, she, 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 I love my mother with all my heart, but she has no guidance she can possibly give me. She's mm. an old lady. Yeah. What can she tell me about the realities of earth and violence? And I'm glad she's been shielded from all those things. She doesn't know anything. She just knows that her son is monumentally successful and uh, I don't want her to ever be worried. I didn't even tell her when this happened. I don't want her to worry about me. I want her to just live a happy experience. I think that's one of the big differences between men and women. When I was saying earlier about how men need struggle and happiness doesn't matter, I'd actually argue the contrary for women. I think that women who are not happy are not very feminine and that they become masculinized and bitter. And I think it's important for a woman to live a happy reality. I think women should be happy. I think that their job inside of a relationship with a man quite often is to be a beacon of light and to be sunshine and to be a cheerleader. With me in my life, the only way a woman can truly support me is to be constantly positive. I'm, I'm, I'm fantastic at everything. I can't meet a woman who can do anything for my life besides when I come home pissed off. She's like, hey, a smile. yeah, a smile. You know, like, like, and being positive as a female is an extremely feminine uh, quality. So and you, you don't want, sorry, 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 you don't want females that like, that like too much, like, would you, would you say like you like a female that like challenges you mentally or? <laughs> but they can't. Yeah. No, I mean, but I mean, like, ask you questions or like... Uh, no, I'd love to have a conversation with, with my partner about interesting things. I love to talk about things, sure. But my life is too complicated for me to come home to my woman and ask for help. Of course, yeah. Uh, my life is far too complicated and large. I can't come home to a woman I'm dating and saying, this man tried to kill me. She'd go crazy. What, what's she going to do? Yeah. Go kill him? Yeah. What's she going to do? She just like, she ain't, she, she's just, she ain't going to know what to do. Or I can't come home and talk about the things I talk about. They'll be like, what? What are you talking about? And then My they're going to match what? My yeah, then they're going to panic. Yeah. And so then, then, right, it's better if I come home and the man's tried to kill me and they say, What happened to you? And I say, I don't want to talk about it. And, and they're just like, Oh, I'll take care of you. Do you want yeah. coffee? Do you want tea? That's just better, right? That's so nice, yeah. I think that with a, a woman being positive and being happy is a very feminine quality. And I think that men like happy women. And I think women should try and live happy experiences and happy lives. And I'll never have conversations with my mother, which will make her unhappy. Even if something bad was happening or I had trouble or I had problems, I would never sit to my mother and complain. I would want my mother to live stress -free. as happy and stress-free as possible Peace of mind, yeah. as opposed to my boys or my team it's the opposite i'd come and say we're f yeah this is get happening. moving yeah 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 it's different it's yeah different. yeah so we again when we talk a lot about money i want to ask you how much is enough money like because i know right now you know uh i don't know how much you're worth i don't know if you guess. feel that <laughs> guess uh 300 million dollars pretty close yeah i read online it was 335 yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> okay, but so what? Do you, how much do you think is enough? Are you aiming for a billion 
Or like, are you happy now? Are you I want 999 million. After you get a billion, they get you. That's what I've They're going to get me anyway before that, probably. I'm going to try my best to avoid that. Um, but truthfully, after after 50, no, not even 50. After $20 million, life is basically the same. If you don't want to buy a jet and you you're don't right. want to buy a yacht, you're never going to need more than $20 million, really, because there's nothing to buy. And like, you can rent the yachts and the jets. You can, you can charter yachts, you can charter jets, which is probably smarter anyway. Uh, I had a jet. I owned one for a few months and I sold it. And the reason I'll never buy a jet again. They can track it. They, yeah, all these <laughs> on Twitter are tracking them. That's Top like, G's jet. I'm yeah. not having it tracked. Bernard Arnold, the LVMH guy, he just he just sold, he sold it. it. No. Because it, I don't want everyone knowing where I am all the time. Yeah. So you know, must. Some kid on Twitter is like, know, man. tracking his jet. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's criminal. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I, if you don't buy a yacht, which is very expensive, or buy a jet. You can buy a nice house in most places on the planet. You can buy two or three cars. You can buy some diamond watches. You can buy some nice clothes. And that's all there is to buy. Mm-hmm. What's actually kind of amazing to me is when I was poor, I thought, if I got rich, I'd buy all this stuff. And now I'm rich and I can buy anything I want. And there's nothing to buy. There's nothing to buy. Clothes, I already have too many. My wardrobe's completely full head to toe. Don't wear most of them. Diamond watches, you get 10. How many do you really need? Cars, I have 28. I drive like four of them. Like, what's there to buy? Coffee, dinner. Yeah, true. There's nothing to buy. Like it's so the money is just about influence and power. That's mm-hmm. all it's about. Um, and now, because I'm a workaholic and because I refuse to be a lazy person and because I am addicted to my mission, I keep accidentally making millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and I don't need it and I have nothing to do with it. But it's just if I get a good opportunity, I'm gonna take the money. And yeah. you know, the war room hits me up, let's make 10 million here. Let's it's like, okay, it. let's do it. It's but fun. um yeah, it's but there's nothing to buy. So I say once you're past 20, 25 million, that's as good as life can really get. Yeah. You're flying private, you're staying in the best hotels, you're eating what you want, you drive the car you want, you wear the clothes you want, you have the watch you want, and that's it. There's not so why nine nine nine? Why would you want nine hundred? That was kind of a joke about not wanting to be a billionaire, because I think once you get to billionaire status, you're gonna have a degree of trouble. I th- I don't know. But for me, I want to be like that one, that billionaire because like it's just. So I don't weird. I don't know. But if you're a billionaire, you need to be aligned to a government. You need to really choose a side. Mm, you need to uh, commit. To- I feel like you need to belong to either the Western Hemisphere or the Eastern Hemisphere. You need a degree of governmental protection. Yeah. You need to be politically aligned in some particular way. I think that once you get to billionaire, you're too powerful to just be a truly free agent. Mm. If that makes you sense, you have to join a. You have to join a team. Whereas right now. I'm effectively a free agent. I can move back to America if I wanted to. I'm anywhere. in the UAE. I could also, via my friends, move to Moscow if I wanted to. Yeah. I could choose any side if I wanted to. Yeah. But I think if I had a billion, I would have already had to have chose a yeah, side yeah, long yeah, ago, yeah. if that makes sense. And that like ma- all, the, all the big Russian billionaires right now, they're freezing their bank because yeah. they're all billionaires. That's what I mean. So uh, you need to have- But have they frozen all your banks? Like, where's your money now? Yeah, when when Hustlers University, when the Matrix was attacked, I did have a bunch of bank accounts frozen, yeah. Huh? I did have a bunch oh, of bank another, accounts oh, frozen. frozen. Yeah, not, but not, obviously, I can't say on the podcast how my my infrastructure uh, works. Okay, okay, but okay. there were some accounts in my name which were frozen. You lost a lot of money? Nine, ten, something. <laughs> Nothing, one lunch. Chump change. <laughs> Chump change. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, you know what I was thinking? Maybe Elon Musk will continue to buy Twitter, and then once he buys it because you like him, maybe... Maybe he'll put he'll, he'll he'll give you his yeah. If I come back on Twitter, if I come back. back on Twitter, that would be epic. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, Elon, if you're listening to this, yeah, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll see. God has a plan. But why don't all the all the people who have been like censored or like removed? Why don't they all join one platform? Because I feel like everyone's joining different platforms. Like what that the, when like Trump has his own thing. Yeah. You know, you're, you're quite on Rumble. Someone else is on another platform. I get it. If they all joined one, I feel like that would be really strong. Well, I feel Rumble where I am now, which is rumble.com slash Tate Speech. I think they're the only video alternative to YouTube. There's a lot of Twitter alternatives. Yeah. You have Getter, Truth Social, Parler. You have all these ones. But I think that for video, there's only Rumble. Okay. Um, I'm now Rumble, rumble.com slash Tate Speech. I think that Rumble is going to go to the moon. I think they're going to take ser- serious market share. It's certainly a stock to buy. It was $10 when I joined. I got up to $13, $14, wow. um, the stock. It's tanked in the last last three days because the Wall Street Journal has started printing loads of bullshit articles doing a oh, matrix okay. attack. Yeah. This podcast might come out retrospectively, so it might be at a different time, but as it stands at the current time we're filming. So it's gone down to like six Good or seven dollars, which is a fantastic buy because it's gonna go up to it's gonna go up to fifty dollars. Um, I think they're gonna take massive market share from YouTube. 
personally, because people are tired of the censorship and they're tired of the one version of events. They're tired of the single single pole, the, the, the one polar world, and they want to see opposite points of view. And people are starting to understand that if they can control all the information and control the narratives and they can control reality. That's why I call it the matrix. Yeah. If all of the news you read is written by one person and they don't allow opposing viewpoints to exist, then they control and create a reality which is not real. And that's why I call it the matrix. They sit there and they tell you, this is true, this is true. Anyone who says it's not true is deleted. This is the only version of reality we're gonna allow to exist. And they're purporting a false reality into our minds to and control no us. Argue. That's why they're called, that's why it's called the matrix. Mm. And <laughs> this is a bit random, but as we're wrapping up, <laughs> would you grow up the hair? I, people, yeah, people always, like some of my biggest haters, it's kind of crazy. I get insults, right, from the people who dislike me. Yeah. And they go, hey, but you're bald. <laughs> and I'm like, but no, but genuinely imagine the intellect level of yeah. somebody sitting at home, right? They have no money. They have no connections. They're not successful. They're objectively unattractive. They're objectively unhealthy. And they're obese. And they're sitting there looking at a man who's the most Googled man on the planet, physically in shape, desired by all the females he could possibly ever want, Everything that strong matters. network, multimillionaire, living a dream and going, He's bald. But you're bald. Like, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. What's crazy is I'm not bald. I shave my head. I can grow my hair out like you if I wanted to. Oh, okay. I, nice. I, I can grow my hair out, no problem. I shave my head. Yeah, I've told, and I've told, yeah, and I've told the story of, I've told the story before on other podcasts of why I did that. But I just think it's truly amazing the, how stupid some people are. Like, truly how dumb you must be. And, and to watch all my content and say, he's teaching so many things. I can join Hustlers University or join the real world or join the war room and get close to this man and his organization and I can have a fantastic life. And instead of doing that, you sit and think, he's bald. Like how dumb. <laughs> I felt bad for asking But how dumb are these people? Yeah. Like it's, and unfortunately the law of averages ensures that half of people are even more stupid than average. Yeah. And that's just the way averages work. So there are some extremely stupid people out there and they just are uninterested in any, in even progressing their own lives. There are people out there who genuinely exist and you could take their hand and hold their hand and try and walk them through life head to toe and they'd still just find a reason to you bring the horse to water, but you can't, you make, can't a make a drink. Yeah. Some people just are born to lose. Yeah. And no matter what you do, they're just born to lose. But, and those yeah. are the people who insult me. Yeah. The people who insult me are completely and utterly yeah. born to lose. But do you think that these people who are like less intelligent are like more happier? And I think I feel like intelligence sometimes it's and people have spoken about this who are f f like fast intelligent, where it's like the more intelligent you are, the sadder you will be and the worse your life will be. Yeah, they say ignorance is bliss. Um, I think it's two ways. I know what you're saying. Ignorant people can, to a degree, be happier in certain scenarios life just than others. Good. Yeah, yeah. They're just because they don't understand what's really happening. Yeah. They don't understand about the battle of good and evil. They don't understand about the matrix. They don't understand that they're a slave. Yeah. They don't understand it. And they're ignorant to how good their life could be. So they think their life is good. I understand all that. But that all changes when times get hard. Because those people are not happening to life. Life is happening to, to them. them. And they are subject to... Circumstances. Correct. I'm not subject to circumstance. No matter what happens, I can change country. I can fight against the wind. You are the circumstance. I can disappear. I am the circumstance. Tate arrives and circumstances change. Whereas these people cannot do that. The circumstances dictates their life. And on a long enough time scale, especially in the world we're currently living in, I think that things are going to get a lot harder for these people. And they will see soon that ignorance is not bliss because they cannot pay their heating bill. Whereas if they were less ignorant and paid attention, they'd be able to be living in a mansion like me with heating on full blast. So this is what happens. And it's, it's good until it isn't being ignorant. And uh, also, I don't think God rewards ignorance. And I don't think most people out here are no. ignorant. I don't think most, but I'll say this now. I don't think most people out here are ignorant. I think that most people out here are cowards. They, and they choose to be ignorant. Yeah, I think they choose to be ignorant because they're cowards. They pretend there's no battle. They pretend there's no fight because they're too scared to fight. But most people out here understand everything I say is true. Most people out here understand that there's the, the shaitan and evil exactly. is being forced upon the, the youth of the children, uh, being youth of the world, and they're trying very hard to destroy society at a fundamental level, and they want to enslave all of us. And I think most people know that, but they're just too scared to say it and too scared to fight against it. So they pretend they don't know it because they are cowards. Ignorance is not our problem. Cowardice is our problem. And I'll say one thing. 
this battle that we're currently embroiled in is not a battle that anybody can avoid. When God and Satan themselves decide to fight for the morality of humanity as a whole, it's a monumental fight, which is one of the largest fights that has ever taken place anywhere in the known universe. And it's not something you can just hide away from. You can't be an ostrich and put your head in the sand and ignore the two titans of good and evil fighting. You have two choices. Either you understand what's happening in the world today and you're on the side of good and you're fighting against the matrix, or you've accepted all the matrix programming to pretend that there is no battle. And then by extension, you're going to end up fighting against your own mind. Yeah. And you're going to be in a fight either way. Your mind's either right and you're fighting externally against the enemy, or you've accepted the matrix programming and you're sitting there fighting against your own depression, your own anxiety, no fighting against your own struggles inside of yourself. You're going to fight anyway. There is no way to avoid this. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to have control of your own mind and control of yourself and fight for God and fight on the side of good against evil? Or do you want to accept the evil programming, fall down a, a hole of degeneracy and fight against yourself and self-destruct and implode? That's your choice to make. But yeah. I think the intelligent choice is to fight against well to fight against evil. Yeah, no, but definitely, I definitely think that was right. And um, on a last note, like, <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you actually real quick, uh, two questions. Sure. One, about the tattoos. Yeah. If you could explain them. Yeah. And number two, um, I heard you, I, well, I saw some videos that you dabbled into making some music. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was funny. Yeah. You want to comment on that? Yeah. So I have one tattoo. It's a snake. It comes down here. It's a snake. And we have like a Japanese samurai mask. I'm the cobra. The mask is like my father guiding me towards battle. That's what this tattoo was. I had it done in Thailand. Quite a long while ago. While he was alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was alive. It took me three, three 12 hour days. It was pretty boring. I just sat there and drank Chang. Just drinking Chang, getting my tattoo. When it was over, I never even put any cling film on it, nothing. I just went straight, started jumping in the pool, jumping in the ocean, riding my bike. So I just left it totally. was fighting. I was fighting with it. Everything is totally fine. So that was that. Music. Yeah, I was messing around with music for a while. That, that whole, I only did that because I knew a guy who wanted to be a musician. And I'd meet him and say, how are things going? He's go, bro, we nearly finished my song and finished my album and we're going to make a lot of money. I was like, cool. Six months later, I'd see him. How's things? Hey, bro, almost done with the album. I was like, it's been six months. An album. Yeah, but you don't understand. You got to mix the track. It takes time. Mixing track. That, okay, we have computers. What, 10 minutes? Okay, okay. Two, two days. It's been six months, bro. Like, and yeah. I'd sit to him and say, it can't take this long. You're just smoking weed. You're not working. And uh, he's like, he's like, no, you don't know, you don't know. So I thought, okay, I'll make a track. So I made a song. I wrote some lyrics and hit a guy up, got a beat, got a mic. I know I'm not talented. Yeah. Talked, blah, blah, blah. I made a song in two and a half hours. And I started releasing these songs I made in two hours. And it was just to spite that guy. <laughs> just yeah. to teach him a lesson about how speed works. It's funny because, obviously not because of my musical called talents but because of my influence everywhere else i got millions of views on my videos yeah so i beat him yeah. <laughs> so it's like how Not many far. views you got? how many views you got yeah. zero and it's not not because the songs are good not because i think i'm a musical genius but because you're tate because i'm tate but uh yeah they're like an hour yeah. two hours i threw them together and it was just a lesson in speed to to make sure that i wasn't making any mistakes and he was telling me it genuinely took months i knew he was wrong but the only way you truly know is to do so i was like this, this has to be a lie. So I made a song in two hours. I made a video in three hours and boom, boom. For, I'm from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. Bang, millions of views, done. And he's still talking about his album. He's probably still talking about it today. <laughs> it's probably, coming does, out probably doesn't even exist. Comes be out ready. tomorrow. Yeah, be ready. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. My life is going to change. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is like, an, like a good a day in your life look like? What are your daily habits that you do to make your day good? Do you meditate? Do you do affirmations? No, I don't meditate. I don't do affirmations. Um, Maybe I meditate a little bit as I fall asleep, maybe. But it's not like a, a, a no. conscious decision. No. I wake up, I check my phone, I go through my phone for about half an hour. I then go and I start training. As I train, I stay on my phone in between sets. I train every day. You're always online. I've noticed that. When I talk to you, you're always online. Permanent. You reply second. Permanently. 17 hours of screen time a day. Oh, wow. Can we see your screen time? Yeah, 17 hours a day. I can't show my phone, bro. <laughs> okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> but 17 hours of screen time I believe a day. you, though. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So uh, if I'm awake, I'm online. Yeah, uh, I'm a phone addict, I guess you can call it, but that's where all the important things happen. Yeah. I have an empire. That, I have an empire that spans across 25 countries. Like I'm, I'm on my phone. I know that for peace of mind, I should use my phone less. I don't want peace of mind. I want chaos. You and want war. conquer? I want to conquer the earth. Yeah. Genghis Khan did. Genghis Khan did not want peace of mind. Yeah. He, if he did, he would have stopped. I don't want peace of mind. I wake up, I train, I stay on my phone, then I begin working. I'm doing a podcast now. If I'm not doing a podcast, or if I'm not driving, or if I'm not fighting, yeah. I'm online. 
and I live my entire life online. If I'm awake, I'm working. If I sit to have shisha tonight at nine or 10 p.m. and there's a whole bunch of hot girls around and my brother's there and we're all chilling and we're talking, I'm doing all of that while I'm on my phone. Yeah. I am working at the same time. I can easily sit and manage a multi-million dollar empire and talk to some bimbo at the same time. Yeah. I'm not an idiot, it's not hard. I work, I, I, gonna- all I do is work. All I do is work. I don't know how else to say it to you. People people meet me and they're like, I'm surprised. I thought you'd be like, I'm surprised how like quiet you are and you're just working. Correct. I have a very, very large and vast empire across huge swaths of the world and different industries. And anything I've ever wanted, if I want a beautiful female or a Bugatti, another one, or a hundred million dollars or whatever, I'm gonna get it via my phone. Yeah. So I work. That's who I, that's who I am, that's what I do. In fact, a video just released on YouTube and it was from here in Dubai, and it's 12 minutes long and it was behind the scenes of Tate. And I it's just a camera it. guy, yeah, yeah. Dubai, Tate in Dubai. Yeah, and there's a, one of the comments on there is, wow, Andrew's always on his phone. You're in the desert, you have, you're, you're on a table with like five girls and you're literally sitting like this in that, in that video. Correct, I work. <laughs> If I'm, a, if I'm awake, I work. From the second I'm awake, first thing I do is check my phone. And the last thing I do before I close my eyes, I'm on my phone. I am working. Yeah. That's all I do. And you run on like very low sleep hours, yeah? Very, I, I probably sleep four to five hours a night. I don't necessarily recommend that. I know some people need more. It's yeah, actually interesting. I, I sleep like four to five hours a night, maybe average for like a week and a half, two weeks. And then I'll get to a point where I just need to sleep for like 15 hours wow. and I'll sleep a bunch yeah. and then I'm back. You catch up, yeah. And then I'll go, I'll go to bed at Reset. three. I'm back at up at eight, go yeah. to bed at four, up at eight. Da, da, da. And then, but after a few weeks, I'm like, okay, I need like a day where I sleep. Um, and I put my phone in airplane mode so that people, when they're messaging me, they know I'm not getting it. Because yeah. if, 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 they, if they're coming if they're coming through and I'm not replying, people panic. Yeah. That's how much I'm on my phone. Jesus I'm on my phone so much that if messages are being delivered and I don't reply within 10 minutes, people start panicking. Is he okay? Have, have they got him? Have Jesus they got him yet? Christ. You know, because there's people trying to get me. So yeah. I have to put airplane mode, which doesn't really fix it because I guess if they do get me, it might be the day my phone gets busted. Yeah. I don't know. But it's kind of a thing I do for the people who care about me. But uh yeah, I work. I work. That's why no one's ever going to beat me. Uh, there's a, like there's a whole bunch of other people and like gurus and self help coaches and these people online. None of them have been through with the things I've been through. Most of them are still kids. Like I don't I don't even know how old you are. And I state I'm this, twenty. Okay, twenty. Perfect. So I state I state this with absolute respect. You don't know shit about life to your thirty. Mm. You just don't. You haven't lived enough. Yeah. You can be smart, but you can't be wise. Yeah. Anybody who's taking advice from a twenty five year old on the internet, you're a dummy. Because at 25, I was stupid. That's why I'm not giving you advice. I'm interviewing you. Correct. But at 25, I was dumb. Yeah. And I'm the smartest man on the planet. Yeah. So like, if you're sitting here and you're watching some guy's videos and just Google his age, don't listen to none of these people, right? They can have opinions. They can be entertaining. They can interview Funny. others. Yeah. They can give their insights. But also keep in mind, they are still young, right? As, yeah, as a man, it takes a long time. You have to go through a bunch of crap to, to learn things. Pain. Exactly. So nobody, nobody can outwork me. Nobody can outcompete me. Nobody has a network like mine. And we're talking about me doing 17 hours a day. I have thousands of people on my work schedule. Like I have a hundred, I have a hundred people who work for me directly. I have thousands of people inside the war room and 170,000 people inside of hate you who, if I were to send them a message would do it. People I know, how do you conquer the algorithm? How do you do this? How do you do that? The number of hours of work, which is done per day in the name of Tate is immeasurable. It's, 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 it, it, it's incalculable. It's 5,000 people. Well, it's, well, let's do the math. 5,000 very competent men doing 17 hour days in the name of Tate. You, no one's ever going to beat me. The internet is mine. I own it. You go on TikTok for 10 seconds, it's me. It's Tate Talk. True. It's the same with Instagram Reels. It's all mine. True. There's no competition. Nobody, doesn't matter how big your ad spend is, doesn't matter what marketing agency you go to, you will always lose to me for attorney until the day they finally put a bullet in my head, I own the world. And I will continue to own the world. All of it is mine. And, and, and anyone who thinks that I get to the top and slow down is a fool because I do the absolute opposite. Mm-hmm. I will crush all of my competition for head to toe. Uh, there isn't even any competition. There's nobody on my level. And I'm still out working all of them. Yeah, but when will you stop the work and take a step back? I don't enjoy, want to. I don't want to. Really I don't want to. No. I, I, that, and that's my competitive advantage. I don't want to do that. The enjoyment for you is the work, not the- Completely. Other people are like, oh, I've, I'm here now, so I can now go on holiday. Mm. I can now. I don't want to stop working. I don't want a holiday. Never. I don't want to relax. Is this relaxing? I'm going to try and relax for the first time in my life. We'll do this here on live in the podcast. Ready? Yeah. Ready?
Am I supposed to want to do that? <laughs> what, what, what was that? What was it? Like, nice. what, is, that, is that it? Is that the dream? Doing nothing. Is that the goal? Like, and if I'm not on my phone, my brain is preoccupied and anxious about what's happening on my phone. So it's better to just be on it. Like, I don't want to relax. I don't want to stop. Ain't no rest for the weekend. No, I don't want. I, do, I don't want to stop. That's why nobody will ever beat me because all these other people they want to take time out. Of They're their working life. to relax. They're working to relax, or they want. They want to go on a date with that. <laughs> I will. I'm at the point now where I would. I I look at a beautiful woman and go. I can go on a date with her, and she's absolutely gorgeous, and perhaps we'll fall in love, and it'll be great. But you know what? I'd rather work. Mm. I, I I don't want to be off my phone. Yeah. I don't want to date girls. I don't want. I just want to conquer the earth. I don't care about anything else. So that's why I'm always going to win. I think that's a great note to end this. Oh, last thing I'll say. Sure. Because I know that they're going to put clips on this and they're going to put one song and that song is like your anthem. I know. Tune it on, love you, baby. Do you play that in the car like pulling up anywhere? No. You don't? I, I don't know how that became my anthem. Some, <laughs> someone on TikTok just did it. Um, I'd love to meet, I should meet the singer one yeah, day. Yeah, Indila. That's yeah. what I was going to say. You know, she's not, your age difference is not a lot. No, she's, she's my age? Yeah. I don't know if I she likes me or hates me. Uh, she might love me. Yeah. She might hate me. I don't it know which be, one it is. Yeah. She'd love you because you made your, her songs viral, but then if she has, she likes the, your, your image. She might be, she might be inside of the matrix with I her think mind. She, yeah. I you think don't she know. make a date special of that version. Yeah. Maybe I'd like <laughs> to meet her one day, but I don't know how that became my theme song. Someone started it and it just became my theme and song. And you never listened to that in the car. Like, never, up I <laughs> no idea. All right. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I could not appreciate this enough. You Thank know, you. you've you've come on the podcast, you've agreed. You've come alone, by the way, which is insane. Yeah. I thought I thought you'd have a team of people like around me. You drove up here alone <laughs> in your own car. Yeah. There's like five people in here that are all from my side. You just but you know you're Andrew, you know? Yeah. That's what's, right. And what's anyone gonna do to you? It's interesting because it's because we're in Dubai. Yeah. When I'm in London and I go to a podcast, there's six six guys, security that's what I was team, expecting. armored car. I was expecting I'd sign, have to sign five documents before I start. No. You would look through everything. No. Manager sat here, ask me whatever you want. He's like this. Yep. I'm ready. Yeah, ask me anything you want. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My G, bro. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Bye, brother. Take thank care. you. Guys, if you're watching this video and you stay till the end, I really appreciate your time. Do hit the subscribe button. You can find Tate on... Yeah, cobratate.com. Uh, sign up for the email letter there. We have a newsletter, which is completely free. Completely if you free. like the things I've said, but cobratate.com, you can access the war room, the real world, and uh, the newsletter. That's where you're going to find the secrets to the universe. Guys, thank you so much for watching, Tate. I really appreciate your time. Take care, guys. See you next episode. Peace.